Okay, we should be good to go live here. Let me just make sure sound is working. Looks okay. Uh, hide that. Hide that. Sorry, just one second. I'll get going in just a sec, guys. Sorry, running a little late because the Q&A went a little longer than I thought. But uh, I think I got everything done to set up for it. For the playthrough here. Okay, so we've got a few viewers in the chat. Just let me know if sounds off or weird or anything. I'm using like a wireless mic today, trying it out. Um, yeah, should be okay. Hopefully there's no interference on it or anything, but it enables me to get up and move around if I need to, which is pretty cool. All right. Uh, looks good on YouTube then here. Me and the myth of legend. And Rob, too. Yeah, we're talking about Gilly, right? <laughs> Thanks, Alan. Thanks, Mel, for letting me know it sounds good. Perfect. All right. Uh, cool. Uh, yeah, so I guess we'll do a little intro here. Hey, welcome back to Rob's Gaming Table. I'm Rob. Today I'm playing Too Many Bones, doing another live playthrough for you. Uh, we're doing Gilly today as the gear lock. We're going to pick a random tyrant uh, based on a die roll or maybe based on Alan trying to punish me and pick my uh, my tyrant for me. Um, but yeah, so we're going to play through uh, Too Many Bones. If you're new here and you're watching this in the future, make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss when we go live in the future. So you can come and join us in the chat and chat about Too Many Bones uh, with other people who are watching. Um, but yeah, we're going to be playing through this here, um, all the way through the tyrants. Uh, thanks to our Patreon backers for supporting the channel. We have some new ones, actually, uh, two that came in today. Uh, let me just get the names here. I saw them pop up in my email. I appreciate that. Uh, Martin Nielsen, thank you for your patron, patron donation. Hugely appreciated. Also, Brian Murphy, thank you very much, our two newest uh, patrons. Yeah, you guys are awesome. You, yeah, it's awesome. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, it'll definitely go right back into the channel uh, and be used for sure. Uh, let's see here. Just trying to get this click. Okay. Should be good. All right. Enough of that. Oh, and the other thing on the screen, uh, something I mentioned in my channel update video I did this week, uh, something I'm going to try. Totally okay if nobody donates or doesn't want to, but I had like five, I think five times now I've been asked in comments or messages or emails, where is Too Many Bones Undertow? Why don't you play with that? Do you own it? When will we see it? When are you going to play through that? When will we see Duster? When will we see Stanza? When will we see this tyrant or that tyrant? Uh, and yeah, I've said it before, but uh, I now do this full time. I don't have a job. I saved up a bunch of money so I could try this for a year doing YouTube full time. Obviously, we're getting going at the ground floor here. Uh, I have some Patreon backers, which is nice, um, but it's not enough to go out and buy $100 board games at the moment. At the moment, I'm going to do a kind of a budget thing and kind of buy like a game a month kind of thing and save up uh, money generated from the channel through YouTube ad revenue, which is a small amount, but it, it does add up over time. Uh, and Patreons, and just straight up donations. I've had people walk up to me at conventions and tournaments and just give me money uh, to say they love the channel, they don't want to use Patreon. So I made a PayPal um, down below. But also, uh, you see the Age of Tyranny thing uh, up that way uh, in the top corner. Um, that is going to be like a special little goal. I'll just do it on the Too Many Bones streams. Um, if you guys want to help me get Too Many Bones under tow quicker uh, and help support the channel and also I guess help support Chip Theory Games um, by buying another product from them that you probably already own. Uh, <laughs> you can donate. Uh, there's a special link for it though and I don't know if it'll work correctly if somebody donates like even a dollar during the channel or during the live stream. There's a special link below in the description that specifically goes to like Streamlabs link and it goes it connects to like my PayPal or something um, but I think when you donate there it should pop up on screen and also update that counter but hey if you don't want to donate, do not feel obligated. You don't have to buy me board games. I have plenty. It's okay. But I would love to get it at some point. And my wife came up with the idea. We saw it actually. Some Twitch streamers were doing this to do board game playthroughs we watch where they have like the little um, thing, just like you see there uh, for the next board game they want to get or just raising $100 at a time. And then they use that to buy a board game that they then play on the channel. So I thought that's a good idea when I don't have really any money to put towards board games at the moment. 
So that's how, if you guys want to get too many bones, undertow content on the channel, uh, that's how we're going to try to do it. If I can't raise the $100 to buy it, uh, that's fine. Even if some people donate some and then like a month or two passes and we don't get to the 100 then what I'll do with any money I get, I'll just put it towards like a uh, Too Many Bones expansion. Like uh, 40 Days of Daylor or like Tink or Gasket or uh, something like that. Or if Splice and Dice is out by then and I'll get like, you know, one of those side characters or something. So, or however many the amount affords. But it'll go right back into Too Many Bones, that little, that little fundraiser. So that's what we'll try. So yeah. Now that the awkward uh, donation thing's out of the way, <laughs> let's get to some playthrough. Okay. So let's do, we're going to do a random tyrant. Uh, there's all the encounters. Uh, the only one we're not going to do from is the Goblin King because that's who we did last week on the live stream. Um, so I'm not going to do that. If you want to see me play against the Goblin King, there's a couple, I believe, uh, where we played against the Goblin King, maybe even with like two or three players. I, um, I don't know if we faced them already in Age of Tyranny. My memory is shot. I think we have, but I might be wrong. Yeah, I think we have, yes. Anyways, uh, okay, so the gear locks I have here, Duster, Gendrix, Morrow, Momesh, Drellin, and Nom. Let's shuffle these up. And we are going to, let's lay them out here. And so we'll do uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. This worked okay last week, or two weeks ago when we did the random uh, on the weekly live stream of Too Many Bones, we did... Uh, just a random one where I just took Nom out of it to get six, and then I'm gonna roll a six sided die. Two. So we're facing off against Duster. Oh no. All right, scratch that. No stream today. We're not playing. Just kidding. All right. So we're uh, gonna play Duster with Gilly. So <laughs> Gilly's gonna have some stat dice kicked out of his uh, his slots up here. That's I see this. I foreshadow this already. Okay. So uh, let's find her Tyrant Encounters. Hopefully I brought them down with me. Duster 1 and Duster 2 and Duster 3. Okay, so that's that. She's got three Tyrant Encounters that are going to be shuffled in. Uh, she's 10 days, or sorry, 13 days, 10 progress points. Uh, let's uh, set up the baddie cues, actually. So let's get all the one-point baddies. Super exciting stuff here. Watching me set up some stacks of chips. Uh, let's get all the one-pointers. Okay, so we are, just doesn't have orcs, right? That's the only thing I see missing. So let's just take all the orcs out, I think. No orcs. Scales, trolls, bogs, yep, they're all in there. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Beasts, yep, they're in there. Goblins, yep, 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 yep. Yep, yep. Oh, there's an orc, get out of there. All right, so we'll throw those guys off to the side. Okay, and we'll shuffle up these one-pointers. If you guys have any questions in the chat, just let me know. Uh, obviously, this game's not new. Um, so if you, you guys may have already played hundreds of times, but uh, if you're new and you're watching uh, our Too Many Bones playthroughs and are curious about the game in any way, just let me know. I'll try to answer your questions. Uh, boo -boo -boo. Let's just pick up a bunch here. All right, well, that's a big stack, man. That's a big stack. Okay, now we'll get the orcs out of here. All right, beast, troll. Yeah, it's cool bulls. This is gonna be a tough one. I haven't played Gilly in a bit. And I don't know if he's as solid on his own as, like, Nugget is, and Nugget's who I've been playing lately uh, because our Age of Tyranny campaign video playthrough series. But, uh, yeah, three orcs in the five-pointers, I guess. We'll get those out of there. And... Tyrant chips here. Where is Duster? There's Duster. Get rid of these other jerks. Uh, donation number one went to Alan. Thank you. Let's see. Did it work? <laughs> yes, it did. Awesome. Thanks. 
99% to go. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Alan. I appreciate it so much. <laughs> That's what I figured. If like, like a bunch of little $1 donations, it'll get us there eventually. Like I'm not, not in a rush or whatever, but I appreciate it. Thank you. And then also a bunch of people are like, I want to donate money, but I hate Patreon. So I figured this is another way. Like it, it actually like will directly go to getting content and like, you'll know when I get it. Obviously I'll have purchased it. And if, if for some reason I get it another way, like not paying for it, I will definitely take the money and put it into other expansions for too many bones or like, yeah, characters or whatever. Um, it, yeah, it will not be just used to, for uh, drugs and, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. Not, not this time. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> not at all, ever. <laughs> uh, all right. So, oh, yeah. I need to make sure there's no orcs in the um, 20s. No orcs in the 20s. No, there are no 20-point orcs. All right. But we need the rest of them, so... Let's cut it. There we go. Hopefully we don't get to any 20s. But it is a longer, this will be a longer one because it's the 13 days for sure. This is like the longest one in the core set. Uh, okay, so Duster. One, only recently risen to power, Duster seems to have her own agenda when it comes to the Ebon. She's already amassed quite a following after quietly assassinating the previous ruler of Ebonheart and claiming his followers as her own to command. Constantly searching for something, Duster remains a mystery. Mm. All right. So the battle at the end, if we make it there, the final conflict, the baddie kill will be number of baddies equal to party size. So uh, number of baddies equal to party size. So it'll be one baddie and a party of one to two uses a one point. So it'll be Duster and a one point baddie on the board. Add Duster to the top of the battle queue. Duster will take the top spot of the enemy meter. And then she has a tyrant skill shrouded. And the reason why you want to look at this ahead of time, and you're supposed to analyze this, is because A, it might change what gear locks you play with, but we're playing Gilly no matter what, and uh, it'll change what skill dice and what stats and stuff I, I dedicate my training points to. So it kind of tweaks your play. I mean, you can do whatever you want, but certain things might be weaker against uh, specific tyrants. Uh, so what else here? She's shrouded. So Duster can only be targeted by adjacent units. Limit. Duster's target immediately removes a stat die from their gear lock mat for the remainder of this battle. If, if health or defense stat are removed, adjust HP and active defense to reflect new max. And she also has hide. Uh, let's see when all this stuff triggers off. So shrouded is default, has shrouded. Uh, if you can see that there. She has shrouded and limit, those happen all the time. But hide only happens on two bones being rolled and using on the backup plan. So duster cannot be targeted until her next turn. So kind of like a flight thing. Uh, she moves diagonally, she's melee. Three attack dice, two defense dice, and rolls her tyrant die. Nine health. And obviously, we know she starts at the top of the any meter. Uh, her tyrant die, which we need to get. So she's on the furthest path. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So she goes up in Ebonheart. And she'll sit up there. Her tyrant die. Uh, let's see here. Four sides are cloak and dagger. If two or more gear locks are on the battle mat, temp temporarily remove the next gear lock from the any meter from the battle mat. Uh, that won't matter to us in solo, obviously. Remove gear locks, rejoin the battle, blah, 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 when rejoining. Yeah, it doesn't matter. So this, this four spots on it is like a blank. But then the other two sides out of the six are Duster's Dagger. Place a bleed effect eye on a target Duster does damage to this round. So that's dirty. But hopefully she doesn't hit it and we don't have to worry about the die too much. We'll see. Depends on luck, obviously. Uh, yeah, that's Duster. That's the battle that may happen eventually. Um, so we'll just throw that there. And that looks okay. Uh, oh, yeah, I see. Okay, cool. Yeah, I see the donation pop up in this little feed thing I have, too. That's kind of cool. Okay. Uh, and Chris Peak, uh, who subscribed today, thank you for subscribing. I appreciate it. We're past 6,000 now. Woo -woo. Road to 10K. <laughs> All right. Uh, and now let's set up. So we did the batty queue. Let's set up the... Um, so we're going to do just the day one, two, and three regular ones from the core set. The reason why is because all the uh, Age of Tyranny stuff is still tied up. Um, I haven't like dismantled it yet from us playing that campaign. Uh, so we'll just use day one, two, and three as normal. Uh, we'll just throw this here for now. And then we need uh, 13 minus 3 is 10. So we're going to take 10 out of 12 of these solo encounters that come with the core set. And we'll just shuffle them up. And we'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 
and two of them will not be used. And then we will mix in the three encounters from Duster. Oops. And then I will put this here-ish, and I'll do my usual stare off into the distance like a dummy and uh, not look. So I don't know where the tyrant encounters are. Hopefully they don't get all clumped together uh, next to each other. Okay, now i got to find the... Okay, so we covered them up, and we'll put them in our little slot up here. I think you guys can see them up there. Yeah, you can. Okay, perfect. Uh, all right. And then we can throw one and two, or two and three. Yep. Special encounter two and three in there. So this is the first one we're going to deal with. Uh, I think everything's all lined up there. Yeah, I think everything's okay. No glare or anything. Okay. Uh, oh, Anthony, thank you. <laughs> oh, I see. Sorry. Anthony donated. Alan, it wasn't you. I'm so sorry, guys. So, Alan, you suck. Anthony, you're awesome. Uh, Alan is no longer cool anymore. Uh, yeah, you can leave now, Alan. No, I'm just joking. But, yes, Anthony, thank you very much. Sorry. Sorry. It's a little small font on the chat. I kind of, like, glance. I just saw Alan say, nice donation one went through, and I thought it was him. I assumed. I didn't look up uh, uh, one more line there. My bad. Yeah, I'm not the brightest. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Anthony. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And reflecting Rob's thanks to the real donor, LOL. Oh, I'm so sorry. I feel so bad now. <laughs> but yes. So, Anthony, you'll be, you'll be there first. I'll let you know first to watch the undertow playthroughs. And, and I won't let Alan know in any way. I'll make sure to stay dark on that. And I'll just share the link with you. But yeah, Alan's out. Alan's out. No owlbear killing for him. Although, is there an owlbear in the undertow? Or do we not play with any of the corset chips? That I don't know. Or maybe I'll just put them in for fun. We'll see. All right. Uh, okay. So uh, let me check everything here. Okay. So we are going to go with day one. Uh, hold on. We need to make sure there's nothing for Gilly. Like I said, it's been a while since I played Gilly, so I'm in, like, nugget mode here. Um, just make sure there's nothing to set up ahead of time. No counters or anything. Nope. So Gilly, for those that don't know, uh, they recommend him like he's a pretty strong solo character. I think I played solo with him once off camera. I don't think I've ever played through him solo on camera. I have played with him in our three-player playthrough we did uh, with Justin and my wife. And I played him in a two-player playthrough for sure. There's a playthrough on the channel with him, uh, I believe, with Pickett, uh, where we played two-player. But I've not played him solo, I don't think think on video, but I could totally be wrong. I'm pretty sure I haven't. Because I remember playing him solo just to kind of learn him um, so that I could play him in the two and three player playthroughs. I wasn't sure he'd be so good on his own, but they're saying he's a two out of four on solo and actually more difficult with co-op. Three out of four. Uh, so hopefully I don't get smashed too early here and, and make the live stream too short, but uh, yeah, we'll see how he works by himself. But he does have like his little, his little, um, his zoolinguist profession so he's able to get animals. Says talking to animals is simple. Commanding animals and getting them to listen is much more difficult. <laughs> so Gilly is a uh, with eyes as big as Zelfy fruits. Gilly is the most aware gearlock in the party. His heightened senses give him the ability to stay one step ahead of his enemies before and during battle. His traps and companions make him a well-rounded fighter and one of the strongest for solo adventuring. Yes. So I always forget that like not everyone who watches these is like a too many bones. Uh, has played so much too many bones. I gotta, I gotta remember some people are coming to see this game for the first time. Maybe they found this video. Um, so we should probably, uh, let's see if I can find it actually. I can bring the sheet up on the screen here. Just I'll go over it quickly just to go a little more in depth on Gilly. And it helps me like kind of get refreshed and understand Gilly better. Let's see if I can. George is here. All right, we're good. Uh, let's see here. I hope the owl bear eats you, Rob. Thank you, George. <laughs> uh, now the owl bear can eat Rob and six dollars. What? I got more. What is this? George, thank you for your donation. Awesome. I appreciate it. Oh, I see. Alan's thanking George because he. Oh, okay. I see. I don't see the pop-ups on on the screen. I see them on like a little feed here, like a tiny little feed on my one monitor. 
Uh, I'll get better at this. I'm sorry for not banking right away, but thank you, George. I appreciate it. Um, uh, are those stars a difficulty or easy? If it's three or four stars solo, does that mean easy solo or difficult solo? Oh, good question. Good question. Okay, hold on. Let's try to figure that out. Uh, we'll know two seconds here. Let's see. So here is, let's see, this view is probably better. Uh, so let's bring up, if we go to the support page, we can look actually at um, who would be who would be hard solo, like Tantrum. Tantrum's probably hard solo. So let's open his reference sheet. He says he's a three out of four. And they, they recommend Gillian Nugget for like our better solo. So let's see what Nugget, what's Nugget? Uh, two. So if they're saying Gilly and Nugget are good at solo, I'm assuming, and it's saying the difficulty level, I assume higher stars mean more difficult to play in those, in co-op or solo. Yeah, see, George, yeah, George is saying difficult. I couldn't find the rules yesterday. Yeah, compare Picket and Tink. Okay, okay, let's do that. So Picket and Tink. And we all know how good uh, Picket is here on the channel. <laughs> So let's see here. So Tink. Oh man, solo Tink. Now I know why Chip Theory didn't put Tink in the bag when they gave me uh, Gillian Nugget <laughs> to try out on the channel. <laughs> yeah, he's hard. Okay, yeah. And Tink's, Tink's more vulnerable, right, George? That's from my understanding from watching your playthrough. He's like, yeah, he's a little more fragile, which is why you probably don't want to play him solo. But then if you look at someone like Pickett, who has like defense coming out the yin yang and you know can survive and then kind of one shot bigger bigger guys uh he's a three so yeah yeah the more stars the harder they are at least that was my understanding from my few plays yeah i would i would agree i would totally agree all right let's get rid of nugget tantrum yeah look at tantrum here in in co-op is like a four and a solo he's a three and that explains why almost every time i've ever played with him i, I lose but he is someone who I want to master eventually. I like challenge. But maybe not like solo by themselves. I, I think they work better in like a group. But I mean, I want to try to make it work solo. Okay, so Gilly. That's what we're going to look at. Okay, Gilly. Let's see. Uh, you guys can see this here. Okay, so Gilly, they're saying uh, beginner, you want to give him at least one defense. Uh, one defense to start off with, then get HP up to five or six. Then switch to dex so he can keep up with his pet maintenance, uh, which I'll explain if we go with any of these dice. I'll go into more details on them. Um, and then attack is then his focus, especially for longer adventures. Well, this is a longer adventure, so it looks like we're going attack heavy, they recommend. Skills are saying grab a pet unless there's a full party. <clears throat> And I think the pet that I would go by for default, like to start with, I usually go for the Wolverine. And the reason why is because he has Hardy, so he kind of sticks around a couple turns where it acts like a meat shield, maybe even gets a shot in. Um, but that's usually when I start with first. If there's any other recommendations, you guys think I should start with someone different. If I go with pets in this playthrough, I may or may not. We'll see how many training points I get and stuff like that. Because I do like to go with the like multi-arrow, brute buster, marked enemy kind of line. Also, I know George recommends like a trap, like uh, rusted spikes, or, or actually woven snare. I think it's a woven snare, uh, as George would recommend, right? Um, so I'll look at that. And he's saying, yeah, Tink is a good support character, but it's harder to do well with solo, yeah. Okay, uh, and then also piercing arrow, return fire, kind of like those we'll see. I mean, we have ranged baddies in this set of baddies, like a lot. So, I mean, return fire might be kind of sweet and might keep me in the game. Um, but yeah, it's, I'm playing by, it's like solo with just Gilly, so I might have to go pets just to keep myself alive so they take a few hits instead of me. And uh, as much damage output as I can with like multi-arrow and brute buster and even marked enemy to kind of help me take some enemies off the board quicker and maybe even multiple enemies with multi-arrow um, so that I can kind of level the playing field because uh, it's just me alone, right? And he starts off with only four health, uh, zero defense. But I am going to play on Heroic Adventure, the medium difficulty mode. Just because I don't feel so confident with Gilly uh, right now. Uh, with Nugget, maybe I'd play without it. But uh, Gilly, I feel a little rusty. So I'll take uh, extra health. And funny side story, I'm going to play with uh, this, um, this print and play chip. So I, I didn't know this. Uh, Ron, a fan of the channel, um, 
WargFN on the uh, Discord uh, and Chip Theory Facebook group, uh, Too Many Bones Facebook group. He told me about all these print and plays they did. Uh, I just got into Too Many Bones recently, but he said they did all these print and plays and they actually sold them as a promo pack. But he had printed a whole bunch. And because we did that challenge uh, last week where we did one of the solo challenges, which you can go back and watch, I link to those challenges. He, he makes these like challenges you go through and we'll do more in the future. But he told me he gives these chips away to people who do the challenge and report back kind of thing. So I did it, and then he's like, hey, if you want these chips, I made a bunch, I'll send you some. So thank you, Ron, for sending these up. But I'll, I'll use the ghillie today, who's like a Valentine's Day themed uh, ghillie. And I have like, there's other ones like, uh, there's like a 4th of July or like fireworks, like Victoria Day if you're in Canada, I guess, kind of fireworks. Um, or Canada Day, I guess, would be the more relevant one. Uh, fireworks Boomer, and then there's a Halloween Patches, which I should really be playing with today, but maybe that'll be next week's stream. Uh, I'll do Patches, has like a Halloween one where they're in like a hockey mask. But they sell them as a promo set, and I think they're going to get them again uh, Black Friday of this year. They're going to sell that 2018 promo set again, but uh, I don't think I need them. Like, these are pretty good that uh, Ron made, like printed and made himself, so uh, thanks. Thanks, Ron, for sending those over. Just got them today, actually. They came this morning. Uh, so... I will give him his five health. And, okay. And for his other training points, they're saying to start with at least one defense. Sure. I'll just go with the starting one defense. Uh, what am I doing? Yeah, I don't roll because he has zero. <laughs> like grabbing defense dice to roll. Uh, yeah, I'm not trained to play this like by default reflexes reflexes okay uh other things to note about him uh let's see woven snare is a nice trap debuff uh then pursue marked enemy for big damage that will aid gilly or his allies well there's no allies are playing solo if he goes heavy on traps make sure to pick up brute buster for more control over trigger and that's the one that moves him around uh you can move around an ally or uh, a baddie sorry a baddie onto traps which is kind of cool is innate that we'll start off with before battle so that is before you set up the scenario in a battle and build the queue, you actually get to reveal a baddie in any active stack. Then Gilly may cycle it to the bottom. So he gets to do like kind of the scout ability. And I assume that stacks with the scout you could do in the recovery phase. So if I pick scouting in the recovery, I then, after seeing the next day before making the battle, like I can do it again. Because it's before battle, so it's only on, I'm assuming on encounters that have battles. And then it's an 8 plus 1 if we get there, but that doesn't usually go that way because I'll, I'll probably pop bones for other cool backup plan abilities first. Um, but before battle, reveal up to two baddies in active stacks, and then you can cycle them to the bottom. So that's kind of cool. Uh, so then this side talks about his traps, how they work, but we'll walk through them. And I do have a question for you, George, actually, that you may know, or if anyone knows in the chat. I googled it, couldn't really find it. But uh, here with the pets. So in the pets, it talks about... Um, so let's read the pets, and we'll come to why I come to one conclusion, but I'm probably wrong as I am with most chip theory rulings. Um, if learned, Gilly may roll his pet dice during his turn, one dex each, to attempt to call them into battle. So you place them on an adjacent spot, or, or uh, like diagonal or adjacent, okay? E this is the part I, I have a question about. Each pet die side varies a little with HP attack, and some have this dex, like they have a green, uh, a green side that has the, um, it's like a dex cost. And I played it, like, so this little thing in the top right here. I don't know if you guys can see that. But there's like a little dex cost. So it talks in here about how the pets have their own turns. And then I watched Adam's uh, from Chip Theory's video about Gilly this morning, just to kind of refresh myself. And he keeps rest re restating that the pets have their own turn, that basically when it gets to Gilly's turn on the any meter, he, they go in their own turn before him. And then it mentions in here, um, yeah, see, uh, right here, I don't know if you guys can see, uh, each pet takes their own turn. Oh, I want to select the right spot. Yeah, well, let me select that line. It's weird. Anyways, each pet takes their own turn right before Gilly. When it's Gilly's turn on the enemy meter, pets take their turns in order which Gilly chooses. On its turn, each pet moves up to two positions. So there's all this talk about pets have their own turn. But then there's this whole thing with the dex dice. It says, uh, dex cost of one that must be spent at the start of Gilly's turns to keep the pet in play. 
If Gilly does not pay the dex cost, the pet is exhausted immediately. So when does that happen? So it says they take their turn and they have their own turns right before Gilly. So in theory, do I pay the dex before they have their chance to go? Or after they've gone, then I can decide to keep them in play? So that's my question, uh, is, is when, like, do they have specifically their own turn? So like, let's say I put out a, a, a baddie, or a, um, a pet, a companion. I put him out on the mat. Let's see, he goes out, this guy goes out with three on, on Gilly's turn. So the, the companion goes out here on that turn. Then it comes back around to Gilly's turn. These guys get a turn before him. Do I have to decide then whether to keep them on the board by spending a dex? Or does that get to, this guy get to activate, move and attack, then it gets to Gilly's turn, then I choose whether I want to spend the dex? That's, that's what I need to know, because maybe one turn I don't want to spend the dex. Do they, look, like if I didn't choose, would this guy literally get no turn if I didn't? Uh, after they've gone, at the start of Gilly's turn, you spend one dex to roll the die, to roll the die initially to deploy the pet. Then the pet gets a turn. Then at the start of your next turn, you need to spend another dex, otherwise pet is exhausted. Okay. So, for sure, if I play this guy, he's out on the board, comes around to his turn, this guy will get to go once before I even think of spending a dex or not? That's my question. So, I'll play it that way. And that's the way I would assume it since they get their own turns. And I don't have to decide until Gilly's turn whether I want to spend the dex. Yes. Okay. Thank you, George. I, I, that's how I read it and understood it. But then I know sometimes I think that way. And then I find out later I'm completely wrong and I'm kind of cheating. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. I like that. Okay. So they get a turn no matter if I don't spend a dex. They still get a turn. That's what I wanted to know. All right. Uh, okay. You're almost 100% sure. <laughs> But you don't, but, or sorry, Q says, hey Q, how's it going? But you have to spend a dex to deploy, correct? No, no, no. Uh, oh yeah, you have to spend a dex to roll them, to roll them always. Always you have to spend a dex to roll. Even if you get the side that needs a dex versus a side without a dex, you still spend a dex to roll this die. But then I would assume they at least get a turn before you have to then decide whether you want to spend another dex to keep them in play. That's, that's all. So I'll do it when it comes up, and, and we'll see if it makes sense or not. And if anyone is watching this in the future and you see me play it this way or, ha or found a Board Game Geek post or something that you know where it's, it was specifically described, I Googled it this morning, tried to find the correct answer. And I watched the video, and he kind of said they had their own turn, but he didn't explain exactly when the deck's decision is made to keep the guy in play. He just said at the start of Gilly's turn. And then he kept saying the pets have their own turn. So I would assume that they get a turn no matter what before you decide. Okay, thanks, Q. All right. So um, I played it before the wrong way then, where I was deciding on the decks before I took the action with the uh, pet. But I may have spent too much decks then to keep them on, on the board for too long. But we'll see. Okay. All right, let's get to the exciting day one. I'm not even going to read it. We all know day one. Um, but we're going to uh, uh, choose either training points of two, or we're going to give a training point and some loot. Where you get to draw two and keep one. I will just do the training points and get a progress. So we need nine more progress to get to Dust Vader. Uh, so the two training points I'm going to take are, let me see. Oh, I should probably jump back. Actually, we can look together. So I'm looking at probably multi-arrow to start, but I don't know if my stats are really there yet to be multi-arrowing with like two attack dice. So you know what I'm going to do? I think I might just focus on base stats to start. Unless you guys in the chat have like a recommendation on a specific skill dice to start off with at this point, but in the, in the beginner stat they're saying get your HP to 5 or 6. We're already at five, then switch to dex. I'm feeling dex needs to be a four. I want to go for an attack and a dex. That's what I'm feeling, unless there's like a specific 
if I should already be getting a pet in play um, to survive here, that I don't know. But uh, if you want to start with skills, I'd go with Wolverine and Dex. Yeah. That's how I like to usually go to get like uh, something in there, but I feel like two attacks pretty lame. But I mean, I am only on the day two fighting two one-point baddies, so I mean, that shouldn't be too bad. Um, but then the Wolverine, it bugs me when I roll it and I don't get it right away, then I feel like that's like, I feel like I should only be doing that risky kind of skill dice that aren't 100% helpful usually. Um, at least it's a meat shield uh, if I get it, but if I don't, then it's like, whoops, that was a wasted die roll there. Um, yeah, let's go with Dex for sure, and we will do the Wolverine. Let's do the Wolverine. Yeah, that sounds right. Otherwise, attack and Dex is okay. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, but we'll see. Maybe I'll get another, that should help me survive for that first battle, and then I'll get some training points there too, right? Okay, so that one's done. Um... On. Let's throw that over here. Uh, day two. Oh, recovery. Uh, scout for four. Uh, let's do. Oh, I mean, one point baddies are a thing, but I'll, I'll start with five actually. So it's the dire wolf, four attack dice, slash back two. He's melee. He can stay on top. He can stay on top. Four attack dice is a little scary. But he's melee. And if I have woven snare by then, we should be okay. To be fair, day two should be easily winnable with either remembering us hard mode people only have two. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know. I play on the medium difficulty, I know, I know. <laughs> I'm not a regular guy. I don't, I'm not one of you, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, so let's go. Uh, where were we? Day two? Yeah, we scouted. Oh, why did I flip him around? Yeah, we're leaving him on the top scouted. All right. Hail to the guards for help. So we're going to do the uh, second option to try to get some extra tra training points. This is just the battle. Um, I'm just going to brush through day one and two and three. Uh, so we go with battle queue. Oh, I don't even have the day counter out here. What am I doing? So lost. All right. Day two. Uh, so two times one, two. Uh, so we'll do two one-pointers in the queue. And so I can scout now with his innate ability. Oh, before I even set up the queue. Yeah, let's scout the first one. Clay Golem with break. Clay Golem with break. And somebody else. I mean, you know what? Seeing him later in the run might be cool. So, like, I normally don't care about him, but I think, like, sometimes putting, like, weaker baddies to the bottom means you might get weaker guys later, too, uh, when there's more of them on the mat. So, I'm, yeah, I'll go that route. Okay, so let's build our queue. Might regret that instantly, but, uh, yeah. So, I think we're good. Battle queue, baddie points. Dire Wolf pup. All right. Uh, so, let's throw him out here with three health. Uh, melee, and he's going at three on the track. And the next one we get is a Goblin Rider with Mischief One, three health also. One attack die goes at four initiative. He's melee. Uh, going in, whoops, going in lean two. And four initiative. All right, let's see where Gilly's at actually. He is. Um, Gilly is, he has a three on his initiative, two fours, and two fives and a six. I like those numbers. I like those numbers. All right. A five. Yes. Feels good. Feels good. Okay. Um, what else? Anything else? Nope. I think we're going. After either choice, if the battle is lost, you place this encounter back on top of your encounter deck. All right. So where is Gilly going? Don't think either corner really matters. I'll just deal with the latchback guy later. Get rid of the mischief guy first. I don't know. That's the plan. Uh, okay. 
Gilly. Yeah, Gilly doesn't like break. That's what I was thinking too. Exactly what I was thinking. Because that, like, yeah, you lose attack dice. All the only other dice I have to attack is this guy. If he doesn't stick around long, I'm in trouble. Yeah, I just thought I don't have like a cool long blade or something. <laughs> okay, so let's. So we'll just attack. So we we're arranged gear lock. So we go in any of these back spots. And I can target any baddie on the map. So we're going to attack, one defense, and one Wolverine. I got a bone on the Wolverine. This is what I was talking about. Kind of annoying, but it's okay when you get two defense. Yeah. And we got two attack. Obviously, I was targeting the mischief guy. Like I said, he's my priority. Uh, so... Two on him. Oh, but he's mischief one, so I didn't kill him, so he'll get rid of that two defense no matter what. So, oh well. Uh, and that's that. And yeah, he'll go right now, and we'll move him. Uh, I don't think it matters. We'll just move him down here. He'll roll one attack die on me. Oh, mischief first. So he knocks this away, and then he'll roll a bone. Sweet. No backup plan on him, though, so nothing happens to him. Now the pup will move here, just move two spaces. Doesn't get far enough to attack, so I don't have to worry about him. Um, and then we'll go to round two. And Gilly will go. He will try his Wolverine. He'll just roll all his dice. I'm going to target the mischief guy next to me. Okay, so Bones on the defense. Bone on one of my attack dice. Two attack. I uh, definitely get rid of this guy. I'll apply that first before doing the Wolverine that I rolled there. So I can free up a space. I mean, I had the other space anyway, so it didn't really matter. But uh, So that is a one point defeat of Batty. Okay. Uh, so that's the attack die applied. Hmm. Splitting targets. Is that splitting dice or splitting attack points? Select a new target after applying at least one die to Gilly's initial target this turn. Split target. Select a new target after applying at least one die to Gilly's initial target this turn. So I guess you just split the dice. Hmm. That's how I'm reading that there. I assume you just split dice, not not points. But yeah. Hey Ryan, how's it going? Uh, you just got Gilly loving him so far. Yeah, split dice. Okay, thanks, George. I was pretty sure I, I didn't think you'd be splitting points, but okay. So yeah, there's no reason to do that with my backup plan. And switch targets just selects a new target a, uh, before applying dice. So no reason I want to switch that too. So I'll just keep saving up for like I guess a fortunate discovery would be the, the thing to save up for right now. Okay, so let's go Wolverine. Uh, I got this guy with that one dex upkeep. Uh, two health. So we'll throw him out there with two health chips. And he's got one auto attack. Whoops. And let's put him... I don't think it matters. We will just throw him right here. Okay, so that's Gilly's turn done. Uh, then the wolf will go. He'll move down. Actually, he doesn't need to move. He's got this uh, nice wolverine here to, to, to play around with, roll around in the bush. Uh, okay, so he will attack uh, with one attack die on the wolverine. Hardy on the wolverine, right? So only one would go through anyway. He only rolled once. But we got to remember the hardy ability, uh, reducing it all down to one. Um, that's that. Round three. Yeah, Lashback's a tiger. Yeah, yeah, okay. Just Hardy on the Wolverine. Okay. Um, then Gilly will go. Wolverine first, though. Wolverine will auto-attack for one, but then, unfortunately, get lashed back for one. So it dies. But I'm okay with that. Good job, Wolverine. Good job. Okay. Then Oh, then I go. Sorry. Then I go. Uh, I don't need to move. So let's roll. I can roll a defense. Two attack, and that's about it. 
So one defense, two attack is enough to kill the pup. And there's nothing to spend my backup plan for, really. So we will kill the pup. And win the scenario. Turn home. Reset to round one. Uh, clear out my active and backup plan. Reset my skill dice. Okay. Um, yeah, I think we're good there. Uh, reward phase. So let's do the loot first. Fortunately, only taking one loot. Miss, miss that nugget. All right, fortune discovery. Okay, uh, let's do... The extra mech leg is interesting. That's just all the bones, right? Let's see the consumables. So extra mech leg, just covered in bones. Is your yellow dice here on the center of your monitor uh, or screen. Uh, and then we have camo which is super cool, uh, it is, let's see, back for details. Camo, roll this skill when acquired and keep it in a lock slot until used. Gilly must keep rolled results. Gilly may use and exhaust camo when facing a battle encounter with battle cube body points. That's cool. And you have to use the exact amount he gets on the roll. I saw that in the FAQ online. Uh, Alan says, I keep meaning to ask, the tray you have the baddies in, is that from Cloudspire, or is that something you can order from Chip Theory, or did you get it somewhere else? This one is from Cloudspire, and I believe it's the same ones that come in Undertow from the unboxings I've seen. I have another one here that you can get off like Amazon. Uh, I actually have two different ones. I, I got one, a set off eBay I ordered, and then another one I got off Amazon because I wasn't sure which one would be better. They're only a couple bucks each, uh, but I got one that was like not as shallow, or was yeah, it was not as shallow. Uh, it was even less shallow than this. Like, if you see here, uh, chip, uh, this chip theory one from Cloudspire uh, is a lot taller and deeper, so the chips kind of, like, don't fall out at all. But these ones that are more shallow, they kind of suck. I have one that's even more shallow. I'm never going to use it now because, like, literally I put chips in it and they're all just, like, falling out. But this one I got off Amazon was okay. Um, comes with a little lid, and I use this one just to hold health because um, it's just bigger and longer. Uh, but anyways, yeah, that one's okay. But uh, there are ones, Chip Theory does sell ones that have like card holders in them and stuff. And I'd love to get those, but I don't think they're in stock at all uh, when I last checked. Uh, but I would definitely, if I place an order and they were in stock, I would throw it on the order just to get one. Just to hold your like um, encounter cards and stuff in the back, which is kind of cool. Um, but yeah, so th th that one specifically, this one right here is um, just from Cloudspire. Because like, it fits on the screen, it's nice and small. But I do have, I would possibly use the longer one if for some reason I got 40 days in Daylor and I had to add more baddies and it got longer. I would use like a longer, uh, a longer one just to fit um, more in there and have like uh, two rows of ones or whatever if needed. Okay, uh, let's see here. And you can also buy a spare one from Chip Theory. Yes, yeah, you can buy them on the side. Okay, um, what else haven't I done? Skill or training points and progress. Let's go to two progress. Uh, two training points. So I'll keep the fortune discovery. Obviously, I don't need to spend it right away. But uh, that's what I was trying to look at here was the camo and what's the third one? The third one is like a reroll on your pet die. And then it has like pet reroll. Uh, and you can lock that and use it when you need to. And then best companion, set a rolled pet die to any side. But, I mean, you have to roll this and hope to get that. And it's only one side out of all six there, which is like, I've never hit that ever, I don't think. I've tried, but I, I don't think it usually hits, obviously. Uh, okay. So, uh, for my training points, I am going to go attack with the first point. I miss. I'll try to, uh, so I have to spend that training point in another spot. Let's do... Multi arrow. Mm. No, let's do HP. We're going to do HP. Let's play a little safer. Let's get them all beefed up first. <clears throat> then we'll try on the second training point. We'll try attack. Got it. All right. So that's where we're at. Yeah. So I can roll all this 
and obviously like maybe I'd bypass an attack die to get the Wolverine out. Um, but for now we'll go with a little short on decks, but yeah. So that is day two down. All right, on to day, oh, recovery, uh, health-wise. I'm at six, I'm full. Scout time, yeah. Uh, we get a one. Mischief one, careless, goblin bomber, ranged, three health, one attack. Not too worried about him. Not too worried about him. We'll keep him up front. Uh, fortune of discovery. <laughs> I mean, I could just get the uh, camo and just kind of roll it and lock it up, right? It's a, yeah, it's a lock. <coughs> roll it when you get it and lock it. Or the extra mech leg <coughs> to have it in the pocket to possibly use for lure away or broadhead. And it goes up to four bones on this bad guy. But I could roll it and only get like one. <laughs> That's like the biggest waste of a fortune discovery. Uh, but then I could use it to get a fortune discovery maybe. <laughs> Stupid. Uh, yeah. Let's go on the... Pet reroll probably should be done, but I think camo. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go camo. Uh, so let's roll it. So I can plus or minus the battle cube by two, and I'll put it in the lock slot, and I can choose when to use it for uh, when building a battle cube. <clears throat> so that's gone. All right. <clears throat> uh, day three. Yeah, day three. All right, we know day three. Let's do this one. Uh, tuck your ears and walk like a commoner. So roll a d6. Yeah, let's just do that one. Uh, if you're spotted, find the first tyrant encounter. An encounter success is achieved no matter the outcome. So we want anything but a one or two. And we get a two. <laughs> so we're going to look in our encounter thing. We are going to find the next tyrant encounter, put it on the top. We're going to shuffle the remaining cards. So I got to be, let's do it like this. So I'll put this here so I can put it on top. I'll look away. And we'll shuffle them a few times here. Okay. And throw this on top. Put it in there. All right. Uh, two progress. One, two, and we get a training point, which I will just go dex. I think we're good. Um, that's it for reward phase. On to recovery. No need to heal. Uh, let's just scout again. Two. Uh, so let's check our next one pointer. The thick skin one, careless, bones, troll, hits for one, three attack. I mean, that guy, like, whatever. We'll put him in there. He's melee. It's good to pair up with this uh, goblin bomber, I think. Like, it's on a couple range guys, which is fine. But whatever. Okay. Uh, so that's that. On to day four. Here we go. First tyrant encounter. Mercy of the Lost. In retrospect, following this blood trail for three hours may not have been the best idea. The lure of scavenging some loot off an unfortunate traveler has too much to resist with the stakes this high. But make no mistake, a lot of time has been wasted. Finally, however, the source of the blood has been found. She's double over in pain, wincing and breathing heavily. Uh, get away from me, duster wheezes. Tunic stained, crimson from bleeding. Duster clutches at what must be a serious wound to her left side. <clears throat> I don't need you. I don't need anyone. You're nothing but pawns of the council. My damn voice, after doing the Q&A earlier, I'm losing it. <clears throat> sorry for clearing my throat too much. If uh, it's bugging you guys, I'm sorry. Uh, sorry, so here we go. She's a gear lock. Well, uh, we help our own. <clears throat> Party uh, must use loot to heal Duster for 2 HP per gear lock. Don't have any loot. <laughs> okay. Uh, if this can't be achieved, you must take the other choice. Well, that's easy but also sucks. I want that training point. 
Uh, what if, if, if this was her plan all along? It's a trap? Well, pondering that thought, another comes to mind. Where did she go? Battle cue batty points. So we're on day four. Times one is four one-pointers. I could decrease that by two. I don't think so. But like four ones sound kind of big for early and solo, but I could also increase it by two to face a five and a one. I think I'll leave it the way it is. But if I fail, this gets knocked away and it was kind of a waste. But I think we're okay. I think we're okay. I'm just thinking here. I mean, it's still kind of early in the adventure. But I'm at four progress out of ten. Her buffer is three days buffer. So whatever. I'll leave it. Uh, okay. So let's... Oh, scout time. Scout time. Uh, with his innate. So before doing the queue... Let's just scout the next one pointer, right? Mischief one on a backup plan only, goblin sandbagger. Two health, one attack, one defense. He seems fine. He seems fine. But I mean, the mischief, like we got for sure mischief one here on this guy's kind of annoying. But this guy's mischief's only on a backup plan, but he does roll defense. And he's ranged. But I. I, I didn't take multi-arrow. Mm, kind of regretting that now. <laughs> That's okay. I think we'll be okay. We'll leave those guys. We'll leave those guys. Uh, no, don't increase it by two. <laughs> I know, I'm just saying the options. I'm just saying the options. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Uh, so that's that. Uh, let's build the queue. So we know the three of them, plus one we don't know. Uh, and then, so this guy going in lane one uh, with three health, our goblin bomber uh, going at five. Okay, then in lane two, we got a thick skin one, troll romper, three health. And he's going at two, nice and slow. <clears throat> Lane three, Goblin Sandbagger, going at four, and two health only, but he has roll defense dice, so he could beef himself up a little bit. And the final one, oh no, Mischief one, Goblin Bomber, two of them together, that's kind of rough, but uh, only three health, uh, going in lane four, ranged. And going at five, after the first five. All right, where am I going? Five, nice. Top of the queue. Suck it, baddies. All right, and where do we want to go here? Let's go, I mean, this far corner, so we have some time before this guy's up in our face. I mean, these guys will all hit us no matter what. There's no reason for me to move up to them because I range attack anyway. It's not like Nugget, where sometimes I want to move up uh, to not waste stones on ranged attack dice. Uh, so yeah, uh, round one. So I have five decks. So I can roll three attack if I want, defense, and my Wolverine, right? Uh, target. Target. I feel like I want one of these guys that for sure knocks away a die with mischief. Very annoying. Uh, so I'll target the far one, I guess. Yeah, because my Wolverine will have more hard time reaching over there. So we'll just target the farthest one. I get a Wolverine. I get two attack only, unfortunately. A couple bones. Oh, I could switch targets, though. I could switch targets to this guy and just take this guy out before he starts rolling. Yeah, I'm going to do that, actually. I'll spend one, slide this bone down. I'll switch my targets to this guy, hit him with two, take out a baddie off the board. 
to have less dice flying at me, I think, which is a good idea. Uh, so those attack dice are spent. And I got the Wolverine that has three health. So that's kind of nice. And we'll put him... Uh, I guess there's fine. Yeah, I can make this guy move across here. So he's a little further away, and maybe I can run from him if needed. If it gets that bad, we'll see. Uh, so that is that. Uh, let's go to this guy. He will roll one attack on... Oh, he attacks two of us. Oh, that's a problem. Maybe I shouldn't have put this guy out already. Whatever. Okay. I did it. I did it. I got to pay for it. All right. Uh, so the weakest first is the Wolverine. Hits for two, but Hardy reduces it to one. Thanks, Wolverine. Uh, then he will attack me. Uh, gets one through. No defense. Okay. Uh, then we'll go with this guy. He will attack the Wolverine for two. Wow, Hardy. <laughs> Those twos are not hitting me. That's good so far. <laughs> then he'll attack me. Second weakest. Uh, mischief doesn't matter. We got Oh, we got a bone. So careless. He loses a health. Perfect. I don't take a hit. That, if that Wolverine wasn't there, man, that first two would have hit me for sure off the first one. Actually, both would have been probably twos, but who knows? Who knows? Uh, all right. To this troll bomber, or troll romper, sorry. Uh... Just wants to go after this guy's the closest, so let's move him here. Uh, he will then roll one attack down my Wolverine. Hits him for one, does kill the Wolverine. Hey, that's did his job. All right, round two. Gilly. Gilly will roll three attack, one defense. On if I roll bones and split targets, I could switch targets anyway. So I'll try on this guy with three health still. And if I roll crap and I'll, I could switch it maybe to this guy and take him out, he's only at two health. So let's try that. So let's go on the goblin bomber. Uh, so I get a defense that they're going to knock away, of course. Uh, I get a bone. And, of course, they're rolling to attack. So I will switch targets and go after this guy uh, and kill him. Uh, boo -boo -boo. Sweet deal. All right. Um, good. And this guy will go. He'll attack me. One attack die. Gets a one. Uh, oh, mischief first, knocks away my defense, then the one goes through. Uh, then we'll go with this guy who just moves up and rolls one attack die on me and hits me for one. Down to three health. Oh no. Oh no. Round three, Gilly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I gotta take out this guy, right? Do I move? So I can roll a defense die and three attack. Praying I get three on this guy. And that leaves one to move away. But is there a reason to move one, two, three to not be attacked by this guy next? But then that only leaves me with two decks to roll two attack on this guy. No, no, I'm not going to move. I'll just actually, yeah, no, I'll stay where I am. And let's just roll. Leave him for the next turn. Uh, message redacted. <laughs> well, it did help. <laughs> Don't pl deploy the Wolverine this turn. He'll just be taken out. I didn't see that. I'm sorry, George. <laughs> You're right. I should have held him. But hey, he took a bunch of hits for me, right? So I'm okay. But yeah, he wouldn't have been taking those hits. Yeah, he didn't really take any hits for me except for this guy. All right, so we're shooting on the Goblin Bomber. Yes, got the three I need. Take him out. Sweet. Uh, and he's out of the queue. 
All right, so those are applied. And I get a defense that I don't have to knock away from mischief. Yay. Uh, so this guy will roll on me. Attack. Whoops, gets a one. Uh, but my defense blocks. All right, round four. Gilly. Mm-hmm. I'm at three health, so I should be safe to just wail on this guy right now. But I, get, I worry about not rolling any defense and him rolling a two. But the worst he can do to me is take me down to one health. Then I play the runaway game. But for now, I'll just stay on my ground, I think. Yeah, I'll just stay on my ground. Uh, yeah, thick skin is annoying. Uh, so a couple bones. Uh, and we get two attacks, so one gets blocked by thick skin, one gets through, he's down to two health. He will go, well, one die on me. He gets a one, blocked by defense. Round five. Gilly, hmm. So we have fatigue rounds coming up next. I think I'm going to move. One, two, three. So I have two decks left. I will just roll two attack dice on this guy. And I get three. Perfect. One through thick skin and his two health. Boom. All done. Okay. Uh, he's gone. Take that. I'll come back with three health left. There's no reason for those. Uh, reset to one. All right. Reward phase. So I get loot, fortunate discovery, yay, uh, progress, uh, one, two, three, four, five now, so we're halfway there, uh, then let's take a training point, I feel like multi-arrow is what I want. Yeah, we'll go with multi-arrow, going into day five, yeah, that's fine. Multi-arrow, just to be sure. Whoops, that's no fun. I didn't need that phone. All right, uh, let's see here. Multi-arrow. Instant number of your rolled attack dice also hit a second baddie of your choice. And it can do it for one or two of my dice. Or it can roll a bone and tick me off. But hey, whatever. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, that is that. Gone. Recovery. Uh... So heal up. We're going to go up to six. Do I just look for better loot? I think so. I guess I could have held that, getting another one of these later. But uh, six dice, right? Man, play so many other games, read so many other rule books, you start to like forget numbers and stuff. Um... Search for better loot. Roll six attack dice. Yes, thank you. All right. Bone, bone. Yeah. So you look at two. Keep one. Right, right, right. Roll six attack dice. Each bone you roll, reveal a loot card. You may keep one. Oh, got herbs and last battle stew. Heal yourself for one HP in battle seems really good. Versus putting seven HP on this card, removing one each day for spoilage, and outside of battle, healing up with it. Oh, got herbs it is. Sweet. Where was that when I needed to heal? Or where was the, the, the stew when I needed to heal Duster for that last uh, encounter? <laughs> All right. Uh, I think we're good there. Did all our day stuff. We recovered. Oh, I healed. I can't search for better loot and heal. I cheated. Because that is not, yeah. Uh, I'll just shovel them to the bottom. Actually, I can probably just undo. So, a fortune discovery I had. Can't do that yet. Uh, I, I'll take out the fortune discovery that was on the bottom that I spent earlier, and I'll just shuffle the deck and shuffle these ones back in to kind of like undo what I did. But I'll put this other fortune discovery back on the bottom that I discarded earlier. Uh, I think it was the only one. Yeah, so I don't know what's coming up next. Okay, uh, then this will go on the bottom. 
Yeah, I'm a cheater. Uh, all right. But I could use this. No, I'll just hold it. I'll just hold it. We'll hold it. We're good. We're good. I'll stop cheating. <laughs> You're lucky when I throw loot cards back. I never roll bones. Yeah, but then I don't even get to do it because I'm a cheater and I healed. Um, yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, so day five. How do we get next? It's a green one. Invited for dinner. Wakey, wakey, little critter. A deep voice bellows as a putrid stench fills my nose and mouth. I cough and spit again. Uh, or I cough and spit to gain my breath, but the air is thick with the smell of rotten fruit. Or worse, something pokes my side, and I start to swing. Swing? Why am I swinging? The question forces my eyes open. Everything is upside down and swaying uneasily. I look up and see nothing but green grass. Gaining my senses, I frighteningly, I'm frighteningly aware that I am bound and hanging, legs lashed, to a tree branch. Below me is a boiling pot. Beside it stands two troll mules uh, currently fighting over what to add to their stew. Gearlock stew. Sounds like a scene out of The Hobbit. All right. Pick up your locks and or pick your locks and escape. Make a lockpick attempt on a 3F2L lock. You escape with loot, just not your own. If successful, discard all current loot excluding trove loot, and draw to new loot. If you fail to pick both parts to the lock, remove 2 HP and take other choice. Trick the trolls is the other option. So they're both non-combat. Trick the trolls. Uh, it, I taste better after being unbound and rolled in fire ants. It gives gearlock meat a real kick. Ha ha. Spicy. Uh, you lose 3 HP from fire ant bites. You may only recover half your HP rounded up during recovery phase tonight. Oh! Encounter success is achieved no matter the outcome. <laughs> this is crazy. So I could lose 2 HP, then I have to choose the other one, lose 3 HP, and then in recovery I can only go up to 3 HP. And if my next one's a battle, I will lose that for sure. This guy doesn't have ways to heal. Unless I look for new loot, and I don't heal, and then maybe get something that heals me in battle later, like if I got Olgard Herbs or something again, or something like that. Oh. Or I could just go straight, lose 3 HP, but then again, I can only go up to 6, and I'm at 6. This is <laughs> I guess I could get health, and get an HP chip for that in recovery with the one training point I get. Man. I gotta keep that in mind. Okay. Uh, if you fail to pick I'll try the lock pick attempt, I guess. It's not a heavy lock, it's 3F2L. Uh, and I could get two loot out of the deal. You fail. Yeah, top option. I agree, George. Yeah, it's like a risk, but like, hey, at least I can still recover back up. Uh, either way, I'm coming out with three health. All right. Lock, pick, attempt. 3F. 2L. Uh, okay. I can convert. I have a 3T, 1F, 2F. But I also have the conversion die. So I convert. I keep this one. I just need to know the colors. Uh, so this 3T is actually the force die. It's funny I didn't get force on it. And then L is this die. So I don't I get to use two of these after. And let's see. There's an L. A 1L and a 3L on this yellow one. So I mean, whatever. So I'll do this. I'll convert this die and apply it. So there's my 3F. So that gets changed with 3F, whatever. Uh, okay. Then I'll roll these on the 2L lock. Whoops. Hold on. Uh, oh, no way. 1L and 1L. And a plus 1, I guess. But 
Uh, yeah, so I got it. We're good. Woo! Okay. Uh, so we get two loot. Uh, I have to discard this loot, though. <laughs> oh, well, we all know I was going to discard it anyway. <laughs> One, two, yeah. If successful, discard all your current loot, excluding trove loot, and draw two new loot. And we got Troll Brew and another Fortune Discovery. All right. Um, and then we go a progress. And we get a training point. Hmm. I feel like Woven Snare, maybe. Because we're going to go into day six. So we're going to start seeing five point baddies. We know we have a dire wolf is already. I can scout before battles. I can kind of know what could go in lane one if they're melee or range. So I can choose and maybe reduce some attack dice. I can also put in spots where range guys are going and maybe reduce their dice and maybe not have to worry about those range guys first and can try to kill the melee guys. Yes, nerf, 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 says George. <laughs> Yeah, once the five pointers start showing up, I, that's something I learned from you, George. Is, is watch for those uh, nerf nerf skills to kind of level the playing field and survive longer. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we're going woven snare, and we're done that. Okay, recovery phase. Well, good thing we didn't lose any HP there. Uh, so we can look for better loot. So let's try that again. Discard the. Fortunate Discovery. We're going to roll six dice, and now we're not going to get any bones, because that's just how it works. Uh, nope, no bones, see? <laughs> I got lucky on that one, but uh, I got punished because I cheated. Uh, okay. So we just got a Troll Brew, which is outside of battle. Permanently increase your health stat die by one. At the start of your next battle, reduce your current HP by three. See, that's risky, but I like the free upgrade. I think I'm going to do it. I think I'm going to do it. Super risky, kind of bad. I don't have any way to heal. But, yeah, let's do it. We'll spend it. So I permanently heal my stat up by one. So I go to seven. I get a chip. But then, actually, I'll keep it just to remind myself. Start of, uh, at the start of your next battle, reduce your current HP by three. So I'll just put that there. Yeah, I'll go down to four health. Yeah, we'll see. But I love that free upgrade, like, it's so good. Um, but it might be a little risky here. Okay, um, search for better loot. Uh, don't scout, no trading. What's the other thing? Make a lockpick attempt, obviously doesn't need it. Okay, day six. Oh, with this, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, reduce the uh, reduce the um, battle queue. Uh, whoops. Okay. An issue of lung capacity, 34, 35, 36. How long before I drown in this bog? My ill-advised taunting landed me here, cornered in this soggy cesspool with no one to blame but myself. Thankfully, I remember that most Eben have an unnatural aversion to water, if you can even call this water. Yet, there they sit at the water's edge with all manner of sharp and pointy objects. 42, 43, 44. The opposite bank is too far to swim, and I abandoned my gear behind a boulder on this side. Maybe I can reach out and grab one of their spears. Combat or combat. First option, 66, 67, 68. Grab it. Uh, battle queue is batty points. So we are on day six, right, right? Yeah, let's just double check. Sometimes I forget to turn the day counter. Yeah, we've got five cards. Six, okay, so that is six points. I could reduce it by two, and that would bring me to only, that would be another four one-point baddies, though. And then it has the text, reduce by two, the attack of the first baddie to enter lane one. Use a weakened two effect die to show this. And then increase your attack by one for this battle. No skill dice can be used in the first two rounds. That's not bad. <coughs> Excuse me. And then go for the gear is the other option. Battle cues, batty points. And no skill dice can be used for the first round. 
I mean, so does that mean no traps either? I would assume. Oh, but that's before battle, right? Mm, what do you think, George? No, no skill dice can be used before the first round. Do you think that means before battle too? I mean, before battle is before the first round. Yeah, I guess a good option is good for wolf. Yeah, well, it says no skill. Increase your attack die by one for this battle. Uh, no skill dice can be used for the first two rounds for this one. Reduce by two the attack of the first baddie to enter lane one. I think I go with the top option, to be honest. Uh, maybe use troll brood offset. I mean, lock it down. I guess the top option is good for wolf. I'm not sure. But I'd err not to not use traps. Yeah, I'm just not going to do it because it is a skill die and it's before round one, whatever. Uh, okay, so I'll go with the first option to try to grab a spear here. Uh, so I'll reduce the attack dice. Uh, we know the first baddie in lane one is going to be this wolf who's rolling four attack dice to begin with. So we'll reduce that by two so he's only rolling two attack dice, which I think is pretty huge. So start of the battle. Uh, I'm going to lose three HP. So let's do that and get rid of Troll Brew. Uh, actually, I can scout. Let's scout the one point baddie before building the queue. Uh, just to make sure it's not something that goes bad with him. It's a thick skin one, careless on the back of plan, Troll Brute. One attack die, one defense, three health only. I mean, that's not too bad. Going in lane two. I can start in the corner so it takes a while to even get to me. Yeah, I feel like that guy's okay. I feel like that guy's okay. It might take a bit because of thick skin and the defense die, but we're okay. All right. I think we're good there. So let's build our queue with the dire wolf and the troll brute. Uh, so the weakened two die we're going to need for... Where is that? We can two to reduce this guy's attack dice in lane one. And he's going to have six health though. Uh, basically with your higher attack, you can probably kill the wolf in round two before getting hit. Ah, uh, true. Yeah, you're right. You're right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And lane two, whoa, lane two, uh, this guy was going at four, and this guy goes at one, uh, and he gets three health, and two, thick skin one, careless. Uh, all right, let's find out where I'm going. Three, what the heck is that? All right. Uh, so I have four health. I'm going to hide, I think. Hmm. This guy's going to go first. He is rolling more attack dice, so I'll hide from him more. So he doesn't get to me right away. That means this guy will. I can play the whole game of this guy moves down, then this guy moves here, blocks him, and this guy can't get to me. Yeah, let's, let's do that. And we got to remember, oh, I increased my attack by one. So I need to remember that. Maybe I'll just put like an attack die there. Increase your attack by one for this battle. No skill dice can be used the first two rounds. Okay, hopefully I remember that. Uh, okay, so let's go. This guy goes first. One, two. Gilly. Uh, he can roll. So his attack stats, four. I have five decks. And I can't use skill dice, but I can still use defense, and I'll do the four attack. Uh, yeah. Yeah, let's just do it on the wolf, I guess. Makes sense. Uh, okay. <laughs> bone, bone. Oh, switch targets, though. Hmm. Doesn't kill this guy because of thick skin, though. Yeah, 
So we'll just hit the wolf with no lash back because he's not in front of me or not adjacent. And we get a defense at least. That should help for the troll brute coming down. Yeah. All right. Uh, then this guy will have come down here. He'll roll one attack, one defense. Uh, he'll get a defense. And he'll attack me, but the defense blocks it. Round two. Yeah, I should be able to kite, yeah. Uh, all right. So I still can't use skill dice. This guy will go. One, two. Gilly will go. Uh, so I can roll four attack. One defense. And let's attack the wolf. So I rolled four. That kills the wolf. No lash back. Yeah, no point in splitting anything, no point in switching targets, although it would kill the guy beside me, but then, yeah, obviously the wolf's the bigger threat. He's rolling two attack dice. So, kill the wolf. Uh, first five-pointer down. All right. Uh, and one defense in there. Perfect. All right. This guy will go, he'll roll just one attack on me, because he already has his defense locked. He hits me for one, gets rid of this defense. Um, and now we're on to round three. So I keep that plus one attack for the whole battle, but now I'm able to roll skill dice. Hmm. Is there a reason to move away, though? Yeah, I think there is. So I'll move one. And I'm going to try for my Wolverine to hopefully take the bait uh, for this guy to take some damage. So, but in case I miss, let's try the defense. And I'll just roll three, two attack dice because I moved. Yeah. So, attacking this guy. Didn't get the Wolverine. I go? But I got three attack. But that doesn't get through. It's two bones. I'm debating just taking a bone with the Wolverine. Fortune Discovery. Or I could try for my innate. I got Lure Away, which is just basically removes this guy from the map, brings him back in later. I mean, I could do that, but I, I think I'm okay. I still have four health. Sucks that I didn't get a single defense or the Wolverine. Uh, but either way, I attack him for three. One, and then thick skin blocks, and one more goes through. So he's down to one health, at least. So I should be able to kill him next round. But could roll my bones, get my innate going, and be able to scout too. Yeah, let's try for that, I guess. Uh, so he will go. Move up one. Roll one attack, one defense. He got a bones, uh, so first he attacks me, that goes through, and then he actually kills himself with careless, so <laughs> my bones, I don't even get to use them for anything. Man, I should have popped it for fortune discovery. That was a risk. <laughs> I hate you, game. All right, let's see here. Yeah, so he is gone. I come back with three health. I'll reset the round counter. Get rid of all these out of here. Reset my dice. This is gone now. So reward phase. So we get a progress. We only need three more. Wow. Uh, pretty sure. Let me just double count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is that right? One, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, wow. This feels like it's going so fast. Um, okay. Although, how long have I been streaming for? An hour 39? Maybe not that fast. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Loot. Throwing axe. Yeah, I like that one. Uh, okay. And two training points. Let's go. So I'm at seven health. Three attack dice. 
piercing arrow would be good for the trolls, but we've seen to reduce thick skin. We've already seen, well, we only seen two out of the one pointers. We haven't seen any fives yet. Return fire would also be cool. Although, my attack and dex. Attack, more attack with multi arrows, cool too. Four, three attack. Multi arrow, piercing arrow. Piercing arrow doesn't do damage itself, right? It's just, um, it is, do number of damage, oh, it actually hits their active defense. Oh, okay, so it's kind of like doing damage if you got guys rolling defense dice. This arrow also suspends thick skin. I mean, I like that. Uh, and yeah, it never has a miss. Never has a miss. That's a pretty powerful one, I think. Uh, yeah. But getting marked enemy is kind of cool for bigger guys later, but I think we're okay. Let's go. This doesn't use dex. This does. So we'll take uh, 11. No, piercing arrow. Piercing arrow is 9. And then we're going to take, uh, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yeah, let's take a dex. We'll go to six for the other training points. Uh, okay, and that's reward phase done. Um, recovery, we're going to take health up to seven. Okay, and uh, I think that's it for recovery. Yes. Okay, on to day seven. Right, right, right. Yeah, day seven. All right, we got a next tyrant counter here. In a fog. The fog is suffocating with no ability to see more than a few feet away. It's easy to imagine seeing Duster's face everywhere. That scar, that dagger. The council can't be trusted, you know. The words are nothing but a whisper, uh, but they are loud and clear. Fog, suffocating, zero vision. She's right there, but she's nowhere. Maybe the fog is playing tricks with our sights and sounds. They're cowards, or they'd come for me themselves. Uh, like the first time, mere seconds pass and the fog lifts. Wandering into a wolf den is usually ill-advised. All right, only option. We're doing some combat here. Could get a couple training points, progress, and a loot out of it. Anyone have some leftover bog meat? That'll use baddie points. So I got to think about using camo here. Yeah, use the camo. <laughs> as soon as I say it, I look over and there's George just saying it right now. Uh, <laughs> all right, awesome. Great minds think alike. Yeah. All right. Uh, Let's see here. Battle queue baddie points. Create battle queue using beast type baddies from active or defeated stacks. As many as possible, then use other types. During battle setup, place gear locks in gear lock melee positions only. Uh oh. Oh, then these guys come behind with the surprise thing. Yeah, I remember this now. Uh, yeah. Then after setup, go back to normal battle queue positions. <laughs> so, Wolven Snare. Like, I can place these traps anywhere, right? Uh, Gilly is unique. Da, 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 da. Traps must be placed on battle map positions before battle queue is created. These can be placed on any position. Yes, okay. Excellent, excellent. So before battle, we're going to scout. I mean, for sure they're going to this position, but I guess we can... Okay, hold on. Let's figure this out. Seven points. I can reduce it by two which I will do, so I spend this consumable, so it's now five points, so let's scout the five point baddie. It's a goblin sapper, five health, four initiative, melee, three attack dice, mischief two, signals one. That doesn't seem too bad, just like annoying, and he's the only guy coming in and I'll drop Woven Snare, maybe reduces attack dice by one or two. Maybe. He doesn't roll defense, so piercing arrow's kind of pointless. And he doesn't have thick skin. Um, but he does have surprise. So if he attacks me first, no matter what, I roll. I'm never going before him. So I get hit for three dice first. 
Worst that can do is six health out of my seven. That's pretty bad. And he's going in lane one. So there's no way I can even put myself in a spot that I avoid him. Uh, hmm. Five health. Signal one would happen too first. I'm debating saying no just for the signal one, just so I don't have another baddie on the mat. That's attacking me first. Oh. oh, five point beast. Thank you. Thank you, it's beast type baddies. I just sat there debating for no reason. Yes, thank you. I should check the chat more often. Five point beast. Yeah, so it won't be this guy. So yeah, I scout first, then I set up the queue. So I'll just throw this guy to the back, whatever. All right. They're going to get shuffled anyway, unless I keep him on top, but I'm, I'm good. So let's start searching. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, it's going to be Owlbear for sure, right? Because the other one is the Dire Wolf. Oh no, Griffin, Griffin Howler, sorry. Yeah, yeah, Griffin Howlers are a thing. Okay, so let's shuffle the other five pointers. Oh, yeah, so I actually play it live always. You guys always catch my stuff. I love it. Uh, all my mistakes I make. Okay, my reading comprehension is not the great greatest. I know this. Uh, okay, so Griffin Howlers, five health, three attack, dive, flight, signal one. Uh, melee. Okay, so <laughs> it's going to lane one. So before battle, we're going to place Woven Snare here. Uh, we'll move this guy in a sec. Uh, we'll just put him down here. We know he's starting here. And I'm going to start, I mean, whatever. Doesn't really matter. I don't think. No, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, he's going ahead of me no matter what. So I'll just roll my thing anyway. Four, whatever. Okay. Uh, just double check all of this. Battle cues and beast type baddies. Yep. Uh, during battle setup, place gear locks in gear lock melee positions only. Done. Then bring out baddies to gear lock range positions. After setup, go back. Baddies have surprise. So he's ahead on the queue anyway. All right. So he's coming in. And we're going to roll a woven snare. Oh, minus one attack. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. Uh, I think we're all set up. So he's going to go. He will move. Let's move him to the corner. So we can maybe run away from him. Uh, now that he's moved, he will signal one. Put that one in the queue. Uh, he will now attack with only two dice. Uh, bones in a single hit, which is great. He doesn't have a backup plane ability. And then he'll fly, so he's now untargetable for a turn. Okay. Now I will go and stare at the wall because I can't attack anything, but I will roll a single defense. And Wolverine, I guess? Might as well just try to get him out. Oh, hold on. I want to move first. Let me use some decks to move. Oh, he dives. He dives. He dives. But he would dive. Yeah, that's the problem. So I already see my roll. And I know I don't get the Wolverine. But I should have moved. I would have definitely moved first. Uh, one, because I have all the extra decks. One, two, three. I have six. And I can only roll two dice. So I definitely would just move as much as I can. One, two, three, four. Sorry. One, two, three, four. Yes. So we'll just go all the way over here. Assuming this guy comes out in lane two. Yeah, that's fine. Even if he's here, whatever, who cares? Uh, that's fine. I just want to get away from this guy. Still hit him for two attack dice. The other guy's a one-pointer. So I roll. I get a bone on the Wolverine, so I won't spend that. I'll get two defense, which is sweet. Uh, so I don't have something out to protect me from his dive. He'll come after me, but I, like I said, I have two defense, which is sweet. Okay, end of the round. This jerk's coming out. It is a... Troll Youngin, four health, one attack, one defense, three initiative, but he goes to the bottom of the queue anyway. 
and normal Valkyrie rules now. So he's melee in lane two. And he's got careless on his backup plan, but he's rolling. Oh, he's rolling defense too, so there's a chance he could get hit better than just rolling attacks. Okay, round two. Uh, divey bird. Divey bird will go here. Mm, no, divey bird will go here. And he will roll two attack only because he's been snared. Uh, I got a one here and a one. So block with two defense. Sweet. Oh, I forgot about my throwing axe. But I guess I really haven't had anything to attack anyway. Oh, hold on. During your turn, roll one attack die and deal its damage to any unit on the battle mat. Does not cost X. So this doesn't say target, so I could have could have hit that guy. But that's okay. That's okay. I could do it after I hit him a bit, see if he needs like a couple health to just shave off. Wouldn't have made a difference. He still would have attacked me there. Uh, okay. I will go. I'll step back one. No, the dive. Uh, but the dive, if I get out the Wolverine again, it might apply. So I'll go here. Five decks left. Wolverine. Uh, ooh, multi arrow. Okay, hold on. I can roll three attack for sure. One defense for sure. So only five. That's five dice right there. So let's attack. Uh, oh yeah, he loses the flight. He loses the flight after he attacked. So we're going to attack this guy. Bone City. Wow. So no Wolverine. Two bones off my attack dice. Two defense, though. That's nice. And two attack. So we hit this guy for two. He's down to three. Uh, yeah, see, if I would have done the axe earlier, I could have done the second one to finish him right now. But I think I'm okay. Rolling big defense makes me feel a little more comfortable. Um, yeah, no reason to switch targets, I don't think. So we're good. This guy goes. One attack, one defense. Uh, he gets a bone, so first he attacks me, reduces my defense by one, then he hits himself for careless. Sweet. Uh, round three. Uh, this guy will go, didn't get my Wolverine to step in front, so this guy will just move up one. He will roll two attack dice. Uh, he gets one hit on me, blocked by defense. Uh, Bones doesn't do anything. After attacking, he's going to fly. Come untargetable. I will go. Uh, we'll go with Wolverine, defense. Um, I don't know. I'll try to move back again. Maybe I'll get the Wolverine this time. <laughs> So I have five decks. I'll roll three attack, defense, Wolverine on this troll youngin since I can't target this guy. Uh, one defense. Another bone on the stupid companion die. Killing me. Now I remember why I don't want I didn't want to take pets this playthrough. <laughs> Alright, three attack though. Does kill him. Which is great. Uh, okay, uh, those are spent. Yep. Uh, round four. He's going to dive. And he'll attack for two. Yeah, I got it under control, I know, but uh, I could have been better save that for attack. Uh, three attack. Wow. Okay, so one gets blocked on the defense. I lose two. Down to four. Four health left. Uh, my go. Move one. Three attack. Wolverine. Defense dice. Oh, his flight is gone, obviously. Oh, hey, Wolverine. Nice of you to show up after I kill the guy. Yes, yeah, stupid jerk. I'm going to pop my bones though first for a fortunate discovery. 
And I'm going to grab that uh, camel die again, uh, which I get a one. It's not the greatest, but hey. Uh, so defense doesn't matter. All the rest doesn't matter, whatever. So I kill him. And he is dead. Uh, boom. Gone. Back. Round one. Okay. Um, reward phase. One progress. Two more to go. Loot. One loot. Tar Tiwarin gem. So I can trade that for Trove loot in a minute. A little late, but we can try. Uh, then two training points. I feel like attack. My dex is six. Yeah, I'm going to go for attack. Missed. So then I will go for Duster's coming soon. Can marked enemy work on marked enemy? I don't can't get it yet, but displays. Move any baddie one position the direction of an arrow on the die. Well, then there's return fire. Anytime a non adjacent baddie tack tackles you, but this she's not ranged. She's a melee. Mm. So return fire, I mean, I'm probably going to hit some range guys again soon. I wish I had it in that battle. I had all those range guys, but it might be a little late for that. I want to get more attack. So my next train point, I'm trying to attack again. I, I want to use it like multi-arrow. And even like split targets would be nice. Could get another pet going. Call Tiger. All right. Um, yeah, let's just go. Let's have some fun. I'm going Brute Buster. And that's just to trying to get me to marked enemy. Uh, but for the next one, I'm going to try attack of three. I think. I not rolled enough attack dice when I tried it last. Uh, I got it this time. So up to four attack. Uh, okay. That's good. Uh, we did loot, did progress, did training points. On to recovery. We're definitely healing up uh, to seven. Okay. Uh, let's get some trove loot going. And we'll try a lockpick attempt. Uh, so it's a 5 3 1. Okay, so 5 lever we're looking for. Not happening. So I'll re roll. Yeah, even with the convert, not happening. So I'll re roll on that first attempt. Uh, so we got two lever. The lever die, I believe, is this one. So I'll re-roll this one. And I'll re-roll it again. Okay. Oh, nice. So four lever uh, and a two trip, which I'll convert the two trip. So six lever. And we at least get one open, right? Yeah. And then now I... So those all apply to that. So that's done. Yeah, they all get used to unlock it for now, right? Okay. So one's unlocked. That's why I put the gold coin on there. Just to remind me that one of them's unlocked, not try to line it up with this dot stuff. Less mess. Uh, okay. That's recovery. Day eight. The Sky Bridge. Is this the one where the guys shoot at me? Uh, it's a cakewalk. At least that's what I tell myself as I hang on for dear life. 1,000 arrow lengths up in the sky. Unfortunately, this ancient rope bridge connecting the two mountain ridges is more ancient than it is a bridge. <laughs> this is an unknown, uh, there's an unknown party on my tail and a trading post waiting beyond the ridge ahead. Only seconds remain to make one of two ill-advised choices. 
I could turn and fight on this tangle of rotting rope and wood. The other option, hightail it to the other side while dodging arrows from behind. If I make it, I can cut the ropes and send my pursuers on a one-way trip to the bottom of the canyon. So it's battle or not battle. So if it was battle, I'm at day eight, I can reduce it by one. Mm. Might be okay. Uh, so line them up and try not to throw up. So in the battle, I could get some loot extra. Uh, battle cues, baddie points, add two baddie points to your total. Oh, I see. So it actually would bump up to a 10 to be two five pointers. But then I can reduce it by one and make it a nine. But that's still a five and four one pointers. Uh, Batty is restricted to lane. Oh, sorry. Battle is restricted to lane one. Yeah, because we're on the rope bridge. Sorry. I should have kept reading. Uh, is restricted to lane one for both sides, and you fight only one Batty at a time. Remaining Batty Batties will wait in battle queue. That actually doesn't seem too bad, especially if I reduce it to nine. Then they all come in the queue. They're all just a bunch of one-pointers, one after the other. and Or scramble across the bridge and cut the bridge. So battle queue is baddie points. So even though it's not a battle, I build the battle queue. Reveal baddies. For every ranged baddie, I roll two attack dice and remove number of HP from my gear lock. So if I, it would be eight for this one. I could reduce it to seven. So that's still three baddies. I can scout before choosing, I believe. Because uh, before I set up the battle queue. But I. Mm, let's read how it's written. Before battle, reveal a baddie, one five point. No, I think it's once I choose battle to happen, like which battle, then before I do the queue, then I scout. Because uh, this technically isn't a battle. I don't know. So let's say it's three guys. That could be six dice. And I'm at seven health. I've had this. I've chose the second one before and failed. I think I'll just go with the first one. So I add two to my total, which brings it to ten. But I will reduce it. I'll spend this to reduce it to nine. Uh, now that I know I'm going to scout, I'll scout the five pointer. Uh, Dragon Delinquent. Seven health in golf, which sucks when it's one lane because it doesn't even hit the other guys. And he can weaken me. I'm actually going to put this guy to the back. He only rolls two attack dice, though, but two defense. Uh, hmm. Oh, but in golf could hurt himself, but I, I wouldn't be, he would be up here, I'd be all the way down here, so like, I would have to move up to him for that to matter. Battle is restricted to lane one for both sides. You fight only one baddie at a time, remaining baddies will wait in the battle queue. Uh, let's see. He's not that bad if you wove and snare him and you got decent decks in case you are weakened. Ah, yes, true. Because I definitely don't really need to move around. Hmm, hmm. Yeah, the two attack dice, that's what I thought about right away was like, that's not too bad. But I just picture seven health, two defense might take a while. But yeah, wove and snare if I'm lucky. All right, I'll go with your recommendation, George. I will keep him. Okay. So... Battle queue, we made it nine. So one of these guys, four one pointers. Okay. Uh, we're going to put Woven Snare in the range spot because we know the range is coming. Um, yeah, I think we're good. So let's set this guy up with seven juicy health. He'll go there. We'll just do. I mean, I don't think it matters with this die, but they say like you got to set the whole map first before you roll your traps, I guess, in case the movement one uh, is there. Oh, yeah, but they don't come in yet. They don't come in. They don't come in. Duh. So, all right. Minus one. Minus one. OK. 
Okay, I will go, oh yeah, he's got to go at six. Come on, die. Give me that six. Give me that six. Give me that four, you piece of crap. All right, all right, all right. Okay, uh, that's fine. All right. We will go down here, of course. Only lane one. We're restricted to lane one. We're on a rope bridge fighting. I think we're good. He will go. Uh, one attack die, two defense. Uh, he got one defense. And he does weaken to me, but hey, he didn't roll. Didn't roll anything weaken to. Okay, I will go. Uh, I lose two decks. So I'm down to four decks. Four attack dice. Seems like the thing to do. But what does he attack, actually? He attacks the weakest. But with engulf and putting out my, my wolverine, it'll still hit me. <laughs> so I feel like wasting it on the wolverine now is not the play. Piercing arrow uh, just gets through a defense. It's funny to take Brute Buster, and this is the one where you're like you're only in the lane one, but I could move him closer to me. No, that's stupid. Okay, just four attack dice. No, we're not going to kill him in one shot. Let's do a defense in there. Of course, I get a bonus on the defense, uh, but I hit him for four, so we'll knock away a defense. One, two, three. He's got four health left. Not too shabby. All right, round two. And they only come in, yeah, one batty at a time. Okay, so he'll go. Uh, he is rolling one attack, two defense. Attacking me, obviously. He gets a defense. He attacks for two. Uh, bones, weak in two. All right, I will go. He rolls high defense. Yeah, he's piercing arrow. Yeah. Yeah, not one defense, though, I don't think. I think it's kind of a waste. But then again, it's all like one point baddies coming after that. So, I mean, most of them don't roll defense. So, might be worth it. But we'll see. I'll just hold it until like a better situation. Uh, let's roll one defense, three attack. There, we got a defense. Another four. Wow. Okay, so knock away one. And then three goes through. Ah, uh, he's down to one health. <laughs> not enough, though. Not enough. But hey. Uh, oh. Ooh. Do I do a throwing axe to finish him? Do I do a throwing axe? He's only rolling one attack die. And I have a defense. No, I'm holding off on this. I want to save this for a duster if possible. Just to add an extra attack in there. And it's not guaranteed. I could miss. Yeah, let's hold it. Uh, all right. Round three. This guy will go. One attack, two defense. Uh, he hits for one, knocks away my defense. He gets a defense, uh, but he also gets a bone. He weakens me. Whatever. I will go. Let's keep it rolling. One uh Three attack dice, one defense. Actually, maybe I go for Wolverine right now. Yeah, he just needs two to die. Worst case, I'll throwing axe. No, I get the two I need. Of course, I don't get the Wolverine. <laughs> two attack, kills this guy, blocks, knocks away the defense, and gets the one health through. Okay, uh, so he's dead. And this is gone. Uh, so end of round. Uh, we get a bog pole coming in. Uh, bottom of the queue. 
and three health. Okay. Um, I'll go. With full decks. Uh, let's try the Wolverine again. Let's try. I mean, Poison One doesn't care about my defense right now. The four attack dice. Make sure this guy gets killed. And I have six decks. Yeah, I'll reroll. Let's reroll the um, defense die. All attack in the bottom. Wolverine, where are you, buddy? No defense. Four attack. Kills this guy. Before he even goes. Um, no reason to backup plan anything. This guy's going to come out. Thick skin troll romper. Bottom of the queue. Comes in with three. Feels a bit like dangerous darts. Yeah, when I was fighting the, the dragon. Yeah, I did feel like dangerous darts. Are you sure the Wolverine only has two bones? Maybe I have a misprint. Let me check. <laughs> no, it's only two. <laughs> the dice gods are not with me today. Uh, they are punishing me. Uh, okay, let's do... So he came in. Three health. Bottom of the queue. Round four. I will go. Four attack. Let's... Piercing arrow to try to ignore thick skin. Maybe we can kill this guy in one shot. Roll a defense die in there. That's six. Uh, but we want the Wolverine in there. Yeah, let's do the Wolverine. Let's keep trying. Well, I got four on the attack. I got piercing four thing. So I ignore thick skin anyway. Actually, I'm not even going to apply it. I don't need to. I don't need to because four will kill this guy. Uh, and I put him in the wrong lane anyway, uh, but it's besides the point. <laughs> uh, See, so he's gone. Uh, Wolverine is a thing. We got bones. So all the attack killed him. Wolverine's going to come out. Two health. Right here. Uh, he's got the one dex, the one attack side. Okay. Uh, and... Yeah, let's fortune discovery. We'll just grab the, I mean, I probably should have been using this reroll pet thing, but it, it's, it hasn't seemed to be like too urgent. There's a couple times where like I wish I rolled it to protect me from some attacks, but I mean, the guys were nerfed thanks to Woven Snare. Um, plus or minus two. Okay. Unless in the Duster fight, but she attacks two targets. So even then she still attacks me. But if I use the wolf to bait, I mean the wolverine, wolverine. Yeah, maybe re-rolling on the wolverine would have been better, but maybe I'll get another fortunate discovery. We'll see. Okay. Um, so that guy's there. End of round. Poison 2, bog frog. Four health. Okay. Uh, bottom of the queue. Round 5. I will go. Uh, so this guy gets to go first. He does a whole one attack thing. Okay. Then I choose on my turn whether to spend a dex. I will. I'll spend a dex to keep the Wolverine there. So I have five dex. And four attack. One defense. Yeah. Three attack, just what is needed. Thanks to my Wolverine doing a little chip there. Uh, okay. One defense, one bone. Uh, end of round. Hardy, Kobold, Green Thumb. Coming out for three. Melee position. Uh, bottom of the queue. Fatigue ground. So my Wolverine will lose one. Hardy guy will lose one. I will lose one. Okay. I will go, but this Wolf. Wolf. Uh, Wolverine, sorry. Will attack for one on his turn. 
And my turn, I will choose a dex. Uh, actually, he's going to die at the end of the round anyway. So let's not save the wolf. Not that it matters. I have extra dex, but... So he gets exhausted. Uh, let's roll. I mean, he's hardy. He just needs one left. I'll just roll. Actually, let's roll my defense, too. Uh, just trying to get bones. Maybe I'll pop another fortune discovery. Mm, I mean, is there any other dice that have bones on them? Multi-arrow. Yeah, same. Same results. Uh, piercing arrow. Piercing arrow never misses no bones. And brute buster never misses no bones. So, yeah. Of course, I roll no bones. Uh, but I rolled six attack, of course, on a hardy guy, where it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, so he's gone. And reset. Come back. Reset my board. My mat. Okay, plus two there. Uh, reward phase. Reward phase. All right, so we get some loot. We get a progress. Just one more needed. Uh, so loot. Last battle stew made a reappearance here. Play seven HP. Seven HP on last battle stew. And then each day I need to spoil it for one. Uh, then two training points. Hmm. I feel like health might be an a quote, okay option. It may be a dex, but I feel like I had like okay dex. But then I, I didn't need to re-roll re -roll, roll any of these because of that whole one lane thing. They felt kind of pointless. But marked enemy. I want this die. Marked enemy. See, these are all like one-time die rolls. And then they're just all gone. But it's nice to have a nice little menu option. This one doesn't cost X. This one does. I'm going to take a health, actually. Yeah. Let's take a health. Going up to eight. Feel good at eight health. Okay. Uh, recovery. I'll heal up. Three more health. Oh, hold on. Last battle stew. I'll eat and heal myself. Yes, so I don't need to use that as a recovery option. And the recovery option, I'm going to toss Last Battle Stew, <laughs> looking for better loot. So I'm greedy, 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 greedy like that. This is gone. Uh, get one. Infused incense. Single use. Roll two additional attack dice on your turn. Does not cost dex. Yeah, I'm smelling a one-shot duster kill coming. <laughs> All right. <laughs> awesome. Unless I get an encounter right now that's going to make me like lose my loot or something. Uh, let's try to unlock some trove loot. So we're looking for a three-trip. We got one trip, two force, three force, plus one and re-roll. Hmm. Or plus one save, sorry. No, let's, yeah, let's just retry. Three trip. Oh, plus one and save, actually. So let's apply this one, four trip to it. Uh, so we open the second one. And now we're going to try for one force. And really did not get it. <laughs> Son of a... <clears throat> All right. I'll get there. I got to get that open. Got to get that open. All right. Uh, I think we're good on recovery phase. On to day nine. Unwanted affection. The day began innocently enough. I encountered a rear Gearlock family living a quiet life at the, at the foot of a hill. Their child had been kidnapped by raiders days ago. Given our scarce population, I immediately set out on a successful rescue mission. Now I'm back, and the parents are applying heavy pressure. Our little one was safer with you than with us. It looks like you could use a companion anyway. 
you could use someone to help you scavenge for food and water. Truth be told, the raiders paid me to take this little gearlock back. The gold coins they handed me came with a warning that said, or that warning that this young youngling was unlucky. Oh, B. Anderson, I just noticed. Thank you for the donation. Sorry, too many damn monitors to look at here. Uh, but yes, I see you donated $10 to our Too Many Bones Undertow Expansion Fundraiser. Uh, so we're at 16 out of 100 to try to get there to get that expansion. Uh, help support Chip Theory, help support the channel, get the game on here to do some playthroughs with it, unboxings, new tyrants, campaign play, all that. We'll, we'll play solo with those characters in there. Yeah, it'll just add tons of Too Many Bones content to come. So appreciate the donation to help us get there quicker. Uh, to get that game. All right. Let's see here. Skills. Uh, my skills are my companions. Okay, that's lame, but really, no thanks. Uh, and it is non-combat. The father is crushed and berates you for your decision. You feel bad. Reduce your HP stat die by one because you got sick from feeling bad. <laughs> no, I don't want to reduce it. Oh, this is a stupid one. I always get this. I reduce it, and then I use a training point to just increase it. Because... <sighs> Uh, unlucky, huh? Does that mean I'm unlucky to say no? You reluctantly agree, and you and your other new buddy prepare to head out. That is until your new best friend trips and drops your pack down the well, by accident, of course. Choose three skill dice to exhaust at the start of your next battle. Keep this card in view as a reminder until this effect has been fulfilled. I mean, that is not the worst, because I have some skill dice here, like multi-arrow brute buster and marked enemy, or like piercing arrow brute buster and marked enemy. But I'm going to 9. No, this is day 9. On day 10, I can reduce the Q by 2 to get rid of one of the 5-point baddies on the board. Multi-arrow is kind of nice for that. Piercing arrow. Choose three skill dice to exhaust at the start of your next battle. Okay, so at the start of the battle, so after I've built the queue and scouted and all that business. Hmm. I think I'm going to do that, actually. Um, yeah, I think I'll do that. I'll try that. I never take that option, but I think this time I will. I don't know. I just exhaust Brute Buster, Piercing Arrow, and one more. Yeah, maybe Marked Enemy or the Wolverine, who doesn't seem to make an appearance until the battle is almost over. Just to punish him, I'll make him have a timeout. Uh, yeah, because I can choose like this. T uh, even if it's Duster's battle, I don't really care about moving around. Multi-Arrow doesn't really matter. Piercing Arrow, maybe... Yeah, I'll just do it now. And then hope we get a battle next that isn't Duster. Oh, but actually we get enough progress right now to go to Duster. But I might hold off one more. So maybe bump up my attack. Get some marked enemy going and one-shot Duster. Oh, but then I get this extra two attack dice. Oh, marked enemy with the extra attack dice. And, oh man, I think I'm kind of ready for Duster. I know Duster doesn't matter that I learned, George, when we rushed to Duster before, the whole thing that Duster doesn't do a normal batty queue. It's just number of baddies equal to party size. So I'm only getting a one-point batty added no matter what day I fight Duster. So waiting longer doesn't punish us, which, yeah, I didn't catch that when we were playing in our uh, Age of Tyranny. Um, and I want to get this Trove loot unlocked, so I'm in no rush, really. Hopefully I get it unlocked here. Uh, yeah, I'll take the second option. I'll take the second option. I'll just put it like here. Actually, I'll put it right on the mat. All right. So I bring the little jerk with us. He screws up. I get a progress. We're good to fight Duster whenever we want now. Uh, I get a training point, which... Hmm, Tiger might be cool. But I think I'm just going to worry about stats other than defense. Defense is what my first um, first ch uh, stat die that gets knocked away will be. I'm trying to think. First shot on Duster. She'll knock away defense. Then I roll a ton of attack. Hmm. 
What would be my second die? Health, probably? No. Maybe. It depends what my health's at, really. Yeah, because I got throwing axes I can do, infused incense, marked enemy. Just trying to play out the first, like, first round or two of a duster fight. Just thinking the worst. That's if I can target her. She might... She might hide if she rolls some bones. And then she hits me again and does limit. And she'll get to go first. She starts out at the top. Add Duster top of the battle queue. Duster will take the top spot on the any meter. And I think they say that because she overrides no matter what I roll on any meter. I'm pretty sure. That's why they say it there instead of her just starting at six. And why she has like the little six plus. She's got like a little six plus on her. I think that's because like no matter what, she goes to the top. Even if I roll a six. At least that's how I'll play it. Unless I'm told otherwise. Ideally I can distract her with Wolverine, George. Come on. Am I rolling a Wolverine? I'm rolling orange bones. That's all I roll on that die. <laughs> I can't guarantee that. But you're right. Uh, that hopefully will work out. Oh, Omni, thank you. Thank you for the donation, I'm assuming it's you. Saying you're welcome. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> let's see. Uh, okay. Yeah, we're not going to go do Duster right now anyway. But um, training point. Maybe Tiger? The only reason I'm thinking Tiger, he comes out even less. He's got a 3-3 three and three chance of coming out, like 50-50 chance. But rolling two of them together, there's a chance I could get one at least, better than just rolling one. I don't know, that's my thought. And then that adds some distraction. Because I don't see... Hidden Rut just stops movement if I'm lucky enough. Russ's Spikes just could do some damage and shove her over if there's room. Return fire, I'm not worried about that because of the range. And then stat-wise, I feel like four attack dice is like crazy because I got infused incense, so I feel like I don't need to worry about that. But I also could choose attack dice as the one she knocks away, especially if she's low on it, on health and then just use the infused incense. I also have throwing axe. So I'm debating not doing attack stat. But yeah, I'm taking tiger. I'm taking tiger. Let's do that. Maybe we'll have some fun with the pets, finally. Uh, okay. So that's that. All right. We're going to go to recovery. Yes. So I don't need to heal up. Let's try on our trove loot. Maybe we might want to toss it if it sucks, if we open it. Law of averages. It's not a bad idea, but you probably need more decks if you're going to double pet. Yeah, true. But I'm going to go into another battle. Like, I'm going to do another regular encounter, and hopefully I get um, another training point, and then maybe I go up a dex there. Yeah, because double pet, I might have to spend dex on them too, just to keep them around. I don't see them lasting that long anyway, but we'll see. All right. Uh, boom, boom. So we're looking for one force, and we got it. Two force. Plus one, actually, and save. All right, so let's see what we got in this trove loot. Give us something good. Mechanical boomerang permanent. Backup plan expansion for two for two bones. That might be interesting because his backup plans kind of aren't good at the lower number. So like in the in the duster fight, I mean, because like switching targets and splitting targets doesn't matter when it's just duster and like a one point baddie, and I'm not too worried about it. Backup plan extension two bones. Select any baddie and do two damage. I like that right there. I'm done reading. I'm um, just joking. Uh, roll a d6. On a 1 to 3, the boomerang comes back to you and can be used again in this battle. <laughs> oh, man. On a 4 to 6, it is lost, and this backup plane is unavail unavailable for the rest of the battle. <laughs> That's hilarious. I will keep it, though. That is funny. I like that. I'll keep it. 
Oh, that's super thematic. I love when the ability and the thematic or, or the theme like very, like mesh together. That is that's a beautiful. That's a thematic win right there. I love it. <laughs> this makes me think of playing uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild, throwing boomerangs, trying to catch them, and they like whiz by you, and you miss them. I just picture that, and you're like, God damn it, where'd it go? And you're looking for it in the grass while the guy's chasing you down, trying to kill you. All right. So let's see here. Uh, that's a great one for Duster. Yes, it is. Yeah, because you just select the baddie and do two damage. It's not you don't you don't have to target them. So when she becomes untargetable, uh, yeah, when she hides, she can't be targeted until the next turn. But that doesn't target a baddie. That's just a straight damage, just like throwing axe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can use it even if she's untargetable. Yes, correct. Yes, I like it. I like it. Okay. So that is, we're still in recovery. I just did that. Uh, I don't need to heal. Do I need to throw away loot? I don't think so. So I'm just going to scout two. So let's look at our one point baddie we might get later. Uh, Dragon Whelp, range, two health, five initiative, two attack, one defense, is weak in one. I don't think, no, I don't think I'm going to keep it. Mm. Only worst thing is like the compound guys in the duster fight that could stick around for a while, and then I kind of got to focus on them. This guy, it could be annoying. He's rolling two attack dice. Yeah. You can use your orange bones to throw the boomerang. <laughs> Fail that dice. <laughs> That's exactly it. Perfect. <laughs> I'll do it too. I'll do it. If I get it in the boss fight, I'll screw it. I'll use the bones. Uh, so I'll put that guy at the back. I'll put that guy at the back. Because I don't want it in the duster fight. I know I can take him right now on the next battle, but it might not even be a battle next one. It could be... Could be... Oh, I need it to be a battle. I want to exhaust. I mean, exhausting dice even on the duster fight is not the worst. All right, so that's it. Uh, we're going on to day 10. Oh, there's a blue one coming. I see it. Shadow Pack. Go back to Obendar and burn it down. You have no idea what you're trifling with. Duster materializes out of the shadows and ca casually leans against a Zelfie tree that has certainly seen better days. The scar on her face glistens in the moonlight. How can a scar look fresh and decades old at the same time? The yellow, beady eyes of direwolves are visible between the tree trunks. I don't want to kill you, but I will stop you at any cost. Without another word, she waltzes back into the shadows. She's gone. Her wolves are not. Combat or non-combat? Interesting. Combat choice gets us some loot. Non-combat gets us some training points. Let's see what they are. I don't think... I don't, I don't remember this one. There's no running away. Battle queue is baddie points. Party of one to two adds a five-point beast type baddie to the top of the battle queue. You know it's going to be Owlbear at this point. And we're at ten points. I can reduce it by two. Hold on a sec here. Hold on. Shadow pack. Is there a, it says, oh, sorry, the other option is add two five points. Sorry, I thought they both said the same thing. And I was thinking maybe the first one's supposed to be a one, a one point. But yeah, add two five point beast type baddies if it was a party of three or four. Okay, wow. Or any chance they're friendly? You offer your hand to the largest wolf in order to let it sniff you. Choose one gear lock to roll a d6. On a 1 to 2, the wolf takes your hand and leaves with it. Permanently reduce one gear lock's health stat die by 3. <laughs> or a 3 to 6. The wolf is caught off guard by your boldness and leads the pack away. Oh, that's risky, but I mean more chances of the wolf just leaving. Encounter success is achieved no matter the outcome. But then you get two training points, which just means I could bring my health back up to seven. <laughs> Alan knows the owlbear. <laughs> He's coming. Uh, the first one's tough, though. Hmm. I mean, I don't need loot, so like just that reward alone. I mean, I could hold the loot. Hold on, let's see here. Now exhausting three dice in this battle, if I take it, is kind of rough. So we're at ten. 
could reduce it by 2 down to 8. And then I'm fighting two fives, three ones. I'd go for top option. Even if you fail, you don't have to exhaust stuff in Tyrant Fight. Oh, true. Yeah, I'm using up that whole start of the next battle exhaust thing. Yeah, true. Yeah, true. True. Yeah, okay. So I'll use my camo to reduce it down to two, uh, down by two to eight. Uh, I'll scout. Let's just see what the other five pointer is, I guess. Signal three jerk. No thanks. Okay. Mm -hmm. Could be another signal three, though. We know. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, okay. Uh, let's do. I think we're okay. Uh, so let's do the Q. So five, three ones. We all don't know what they are, unfortunately. And oh, but then we're gonna add a beast type, so we get to know the beast type. So that helps it with woven snare. Unless the owl bears the five pointer hiding in there already. Nope, here he is. There he is. All right, let's do it. So we're gonna shuffle up the rest of the five pointers. Uh, bottom option is a gamble. Albert, yeah, we got him. All right. So we know where we're putting that woven snare. Right there. We're going to exhaust three dice. Let's do piercing arrow, brute buster, and marked enemy. Oh. All right. I want chat's decision. Multi arrow or marked enemy? Or one of the pets? What, what do you guys think? I want to know in the chat. And the Wolven Snare will come out red bone, I bet. <laughs> yes! It's scared of the owl bear. It will turn red. No, keep marked enemy. Okay. Any other suggestions? Anyone? Anyone? Final vote? Exhaust the tiger. <laughs> you might be right. You might be right. But that tiger... Uh, I'll roll bones on it every time. Yeah, I'll exhaust the tiger. Even if you're joking, I still think it's the right option. Yeah, we got to be serious on this battle and be more efficient. And it's more of a gamble. Okay, so we're exhausting these three dice. Okay. Uh, so let's do Owlbear. Coming in lane one, six health. And we're going to do this woven snare in one second. Um... Then we'll do the other five-pointer is Mischief 2, Signal 1, Goblin Sapper. Going in the melee position, five health. Uh, so Albear was at four. This guy's also a four. Okay. Uh, the next one-pointer, Griffin Yearling, two health. Uh, melee. Going in at five. Okay. And last, Poison 2 Bog Frog. Jay Plays, thank you so much uh, for the $5 donation in the, in the chat there. I don't know what that is you just did. I've never seen that before. Is that a super chat you did? But yes, thank you. Did you want that to go to the donation? Because if so, I'll just add that in to the... Um, I'll try to mess with it after the stream, see if I can change it before the next stream. Um, to add that into the undertow, if you want. But I assume, I assume that's what you're trying to do. Just let me know, Jay. Thank you. Uh, all right. Four, lane four, melee. So it's a whole melee lineup. 
Really glad I didn't take Return Fire as one of my skill dice. <laughs> okay, uh, this guy's coming in at three. All right, let's roll Woven Snare on Jimmy Owlbear here. J plays. I clicked on the number in the chat thing. You use it however you like. Okay, well, cool. Thank you. I'll put it towards the undertow. But yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs> awesome. All right. So let's go uh, take the bone. <laughs> okay. George called it. George called it. All right. Uh, let's see where we're going. Six. Yes. We got the six. All right. So where are we starting? As far away from Owlbear as possible, but he can get to only, I guess we're going on this side for sure. I mean, Mischief 2, 3 attack dice is big, but hold on. Let's see who's he inspiring. He's inspiring the this guy. Ooh, four attack dice, Mischief 2. Uh, and if we kill him, he'll inspire the Bog Frog, giving him an attack die. Oh, man. I think there's an argument for attacking this guy first. Trying to kill him. Five health. Yeah. Yeah, I might be able to use Mechanical Boomerang on him. Uh, let's see here. Oh, thanks, Jay. I appreciate it. I appreciate it so much. Um, sorry, the red bone was way overdue. You're agree uh, so agreed. And you know you play that die a lot. I'm sure you see how often it comes up. I say roll four attack, marked enemy, and the Wolverine. Uh, on the owlbear, you're saying take him out? Now, why I don't think attack the owlbear, I may be wrong, but let me just walk you through my thought process here. He inspires this guy no matter what because it's just his ability. So he would, let's say, I could move him like here. He doesn't hit me right now. No four attack dice. But then he inspires this guy, who I could make come down here. He mischiefs me, so any defense dice I have, gone. Then he rolls four attack because he's inspired by one. And that hurts. And he signals. Brings another baddie along with him. But if I wipe this guy out and go after him first, no signal, no four attack dice right away, no mischief two, then I just have Bog Frog coming down being a jerk face, and poisoning two, and hitting me with one attack die. And But then I have Owlbear, if I don't rule Wolverine, which we know will happen that way, will smash me for four dice after that. But I never got this four dice. But if I don't kill this guy, the four dice happens anyway. Mm. Five health, though. Five health. I have a throwing axe as a backup. Maybe two backup plane extension. Maybe I get the Wolverine in front, too, to protect. Okay, try this. Deploy it bottom left, take out the Wolverine. Mm. Bottom left means this guy's attacking me for two if I don't get the Wolverine. This guy attacks for two. Then Owlbear attacks for four. No. Nope, 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 nope. I'm not betting on the Wolverine. Not betting on the Wolverine. I'll go over here. I'll stay over here and try what I said. I'll go ham on this this guy. But I could go over here, like you're saying, and just go ham on Owlbear with, with marked enemy. But that does have a chance of missing on two sides also. Just like our friend the Wolverine. So half damaging this guy and leaving this guy around. I mean, this guy wouldn't be attacking me right away. Mm. I think this is huge. 
So this five health. I don't know. I'm going to try it my way. Just to gamble. But poison two and an attack dice is worse than just two attack. But you have infused incense and throwing axe. No, the owl bear be dead. Take out the owl bear, I mean. Oh, I see, I see. Go here, take out owl bear. The thing is, I don't want to use infused incense right now. I want to save it for the duster fight and use it on duster. My, my chance I get to attack her. And it also helps if for some reason things are going bad and I lose an attack dice, I can use this to get extra attack on Duster, where she her limit ability would knock away dice. Yeah. Yeah, this is tough. So Albert has six health. I roll four attack dice. Wolverine, marked enemy. And then I have the backup of Mechanical Boomerang or Throwing Axe. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I see. I see. Okay. I'll go here. Let's try that. Okay. Yeah, going first is so cool. It's like eh, really helpful in a situation. Uh, all right. All right. Okay. Uh, so let's do this. I think I've done everything before going. All right. So four attack. Wolverine. Marked enemy. I'm not having a defense die though. Like mechanical boomerang. I mean, I'll get a bones out of all these, at least one. And if I don't, hey, I'm living the dream. But no defense die. And the bird attacking for two dice. But I need to kill Owlbear. Yeah. All right, let's do it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> stupid Wolverine, stupid marked enemy. Okay, hold on. So I got four attack. Four attack. Okay, let's think here. Four attack. Yeah, let's do that. So he's down to two left. Of course, i got to spend some bones to do the boomerang. I, I won't waste throwing axe right now, I don't think. Uh, okay. So those are spent. I am terrified now. So I can't attack him again next turn. So I have to make sure I kill him. Because I don't need him running around throwing four dice around. So I will keep... Hmm. I think the Wolverine's really important. Just because I have so many enemies to distract still. And marked... The marked enemy... I mean, it's nice on this guy... But I think I'm okay. I think I need to try to get the Wolverine. Yep. So let's pop this mechanical boomerang. Kill the owlbear. Okay. And then we roll a d6 on the mechanical boomerang. It's a four. So it's lost. So we'll just tilt it sideways so we don't. Accidentally use it again. So we threw it once, hit the guy, but it never came back. <laughs> uh, terrify I don't think will matter. Unless this guy is a, has a Terrify trait but, or skill. <coughs> Kill with Boomerang. Yes, we did that. All right, and let's go Griffin Yearling. Comes down. Two attack dice. Double bones! Lucky. And he will fly. Where is the flight? So he's untargetable. Which, I wish I got that boomerang back right now. That would be nice. Uh, okay, so he misses, which is great. 
Uh, this guy, one, two, he'll signal one. Bring another baddie into the queue, one pointer. Doesn't attack, doesn't roll defense. Then we'll go bog frog, one, two. Okay, uh, end of the round. Uh, another griffin yearling is coming into play. Range, or in lane one, two health. Going at the bottom of the queue, round two. All right, my chance to go here. So we're trying to get Wolverine before this spot gets taken, hopefully, would be sweet. And we're going to attack, I think we'll attack this guy. Hold on, let me see what I can roll here. Six decks. So I want defense, but I also want to get multi-arrow going. But maybe I wait on the multi-arrow one more turn and just focus on this guy with all my dice. Because multi-arrow, that is number of your rolled attack dice also hit a second battery of your choice. Ooh. Ooh. You know what? Let's get risky. Let's get risky. Maybe I can take out uh, this Griffin Yearling or maybe the Bog Frog, or at least weaken the Bog Frog. And also, uh, Throwing Axe. I might use a Throwing Axe too. Let's see. So I get two. So two of my dice. I got a two and a one and a one and a bone. So let's throw the bone in there. I got the Wolf actually with the three health side. Which is great. Okay, so two of my dice can hit another target, so I can send three somewhere else. Not enough to kill this guy, but I mean, it is enough to take out this guy. So let's do four on this guy. One, two, three, four. Okay, he's down to one health. And let the Wolverine take care of him. Sweet. Uh, and then we'll do two on the Griffin Yearling. Or three. No, let's do three on the, the frog. One, two, three. Yeah. Yeah, let's do three on the frog because then he's one health away. So maybe I can attack him instead. Depending on what's the worst situation, we'll just decide. So that's exhausted. Those are done. Yeah. All right. This guy will go. Two attack dice on me. Uh, he only hits for one. Oh, yeah. I lose the terrify. That's long gone. Uh, okay. And then he doesn't fly anymore. Uh, Bones doesn't do anything for him. This guy will attack... Three dice on my Wolverine, who hardies down three damage to one. Uh, Bog Frog will move down one. Uh, he will just slap a poison two on the Wolverine. Griffin Yearling can't get in anywhere to attack, so he'll just stay where he is. End of the round, no one needs to come in. I will go, so Wolverine goes before me, he'll lose one to poison, because his hardy's down two to one, down ticks. Uh, then he will attack I think he just gets rid of this guy, yeah, he'll just get rid of this guy, attack for one, the goblin sapper, oh, he's a five pointer. Okay, uh, and now on my turn, do I keep him around? He's gonna, yeah, I think I keep him just because the bog frog is distracted with him. So I'll spend a deck, so I only have five decks. Oh no, sorry, it's not his turn, what am I doing? Yeah, it is my turn, it's my turn. Yeah, yeah, sorry, so confused. All right, 
So yeah, I'll spend a dex to keep him around another round. So I have five dex. Um, I will... These were exhausted. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, let's do four attack, one defense. So if I keep him around another turn, he dies at the service next turn anyway, but he's a distraction for this guy right now. Which will just reset this poison, that's fine. So I'm going to leave this guy. I'm going to go after this guy. Because he's targetable right now. Let's get him. Get that Griffin Yearling. Uh, so I get four attack. That's enough to kill him for sure. One defense. One bone. Ooh, split targets. Split targets. So let's just apply this two to him. I'll spend two bones to split my targets. So then these other two dice will go after this one. And we'll kill it. Yeah, so I applied one die to the first guy. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm pretty sure. Oh, am I supposed to be on round three? Whoops. I think maybe. Did I forget that? I don't think I did. Maybe I did. Okay. Um, then this bog frog will go. He'll just reset this to two. Uh, end of the round. We get a dragon hatchling is our final enemy. Three health. Going in the range lane one position. Coming in the bottom of the queue. Range round four. And then... I'll go, but it'll be this guy's turn. He will just die to poison. Look at all these dice exhausted, man. That feels good. Round one, you killed Albert. Round two, you attacked the goblin. Yes. Yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you. My memory is shot. All right. Uh, let's go. Okay, that was the wolf turn. Now my turn. I'll move over one, so that way I'm good for an engulf if I miss here. And I will attack this guy for four attack dice, whoops, four attack dice. And I have one other dex, yeah, let's re-roll, yeah, we'll re-roll the defense die. Because we get some bones. Uh, yeah, so I kill this guy easily. Oh, switch targets, though. Any reason why I want to switch targets? If I take him out, I don't get poison 2 on me. Then I just have this guy rolling on me, one attack die. If he puts a poison 2 on me, and this guy attacks me... I take this guy out, he puts poison two, gets around on my turn, I do the poison two, that kind of sucks. Yeah, let's switch targets. We'll just kill the bog frog. Yeah. So I don't take a for sure two damage. Maybe I take only like one damage a bone or maybe two, who knows. Alright, so I switch targets to the bog frog. He is dead. Uh, this guy will go roll one attack on me. Gets a one. Okay, round five. I will go four attack dice, one defense, attacking the dragon, and boom, he's dead. All right, so those are all gone. Uh, I'm back. He's back. This guy's dead. Dragon is a one-pointer. Resets. All right. Reward phase. Um, progress doesn't matter. Training points. Decks. Up to seven decks. Yes, seven decks. Okay, let's throw all of our... Stuff back in its spot here. Uh, 
Um, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six health. I can heal up two. All right, so reward phase done, recovery phase. Let's just heal up two. Boomerang's back. Don't need to unlock any trove loot. I think we're good. I think we're going duster now. I think we're going duster. Yeah, boomerang untaps. Yeah, yeah. It's just till the rest of the battle. It's unavailable. Uh, okay. I think we're going on to number two. Or, or sorry, yeah, duster's encounter. Day 11. So we have till day 13. So we have, could have three attempts on duster here, but I think we'll be okay. Our loot, our loot makes me feel good. Uh, okay, so battle queue is number of baddies equal to party size. So it's literally, oh, I can scout right now. Let's check the one pointer. Party and compound. See, this is the kind of guy I didn't want in the duster fight. Because if the fight goes long, this guy, uh, it takes two rounds to take this guy out most likely. And then he just keeps getting bigger as the battle goes on. So I'm actually going to put him on the bottom. Um, so I'll use a one point baddie. Then add Duster to the top of the queue. Okay, bring your die over here. Okay, so remember, she is shrouded. Duster can only be targeted by adjacent units, which kind of sucks when you're playing as a ranged guy. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, the extra decks will be good for running around the mat too. Uh, limit. Duster's target immediately removes a stat die from their gear lock mat for the remainder of this battle. Also, she has hide if she rolls two bones on her backup plan, uh, where she becomes untargetable till her next turn. And then Cloak and Dagger does nothing because I'm playing solo, but then on Duster's Dagger, the two sides out of six, I place a bleed, they'll, she'll place a bleed effect die on any target she does damage to this round. Compound is a great ability but it sure sucks to go against. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all right. Okay, let's see here. So, uh, oh yeah, this is gone. Yeah, I forgot to move this from before. Oh no, that's what I was just doing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I did the wrong reward phase. Yeah, I was looking at this stupid card. So ignore that. So I have a uh, loot. Yeah, loot's the difference, right? Yeah, because I did this whole thing. Man, Olga herbs, nice. And that doesn't change anything in the recovery phase. Yeah, we're good. Okay, yeah, grab the wrong card. Uh, all right. So duster. Uh, hmm, where am I gonna put that woven snare? Hmm. <laughs> Duster's coming in. Top of the queue. All day, every day. All right. Nine health. Here we are. Final showdown. Maybe, unless I lose. All right. So let's just throw her there. And the other one point bad is drum roll. Thick skin, careless on the back of plan. Troll, brute, melee. Three health. Going at one. On the initiative, two in the melee spot. Where are you? Okay. Seems good, seems good. All right, let's roll. Minus two. Yeah. Right, that can go on any baddie, right? Just make sure. Reduce attack stat of this unit by number for battle. Feels good. Feels powerful. Too powerful. <laughs> no red bone for me this time. All right. Uh, roll my initiative. Four. Still good. All right. I will go. Hmm. I want to be close to her. But she's going to come to me anyway. She can move diagonally, so it doesn't matter where I go. But I'll go over here. Because I can move her so that she gets in his way a little bit, kind of. Not really, but at least I'm further from this guy. Whatever. Okay. 
And yeah, she'll be beside me when it's my turn to attack anyway, so I don't need to waste decks to go after her. Uh, double check the chat, everything okay? Yep, looks good, we're still alive, yeah. All right, okay. <laughs> let's go Duster. Uh, we said, let's move here. So, one attack die, two defense, tyrant die, and has, hold on, limit works right now. So I'll immediately remove one stat die for this battle. So my defense is moved. I have only no defense. Only zero. Uh, here we go. All right. Only one bone. She got the cloak and dagger, which does jack right now. Takes the defense. Didn't get the hide, which is perfect. Uh, does nothing else with that bone. And only attacks me for one. Yay. I think we got it all. Did we do it all? Shrouded. I'm adjacent. Doesn't matter. Limit happened. Hide. Doesn't happen. And we didn't get Duster's Dagger. I think we're okay. Nothing else. So I was worried with Tyrants. They have so much to like keep track of every time they attack and roll bones and stuff. All right. Let's go my turn. Heal myself for one HP. Chew on some herbs. <laughs> okay. Uh, whoops. It should just go like this. It's got three uses. Three uses. Okay. Um, yeah. We're going all in. So we're going to use uh, infused, or infused essence for two additional attack dice that don't cost dex. Four attack dice, I think, from my stat. I can roll up to seven dice here. We're definitely rolling marked enemy. I don't see a point to using multi-arrow because I, I don't think I'm going to do so much damage that I then, well, I maybe get rid of that other guy, but <sighs> I feel like that is that unless I want to roll piercing arrow, but I think this is the way to go. And then I also have backup plane extension and throwing axe, which I can do after. I can do throwing axe after. Yep, you're alive, or you're the most articulate zombie ever. <laughs> All right, so let's go attack Duster. I'm adjacent. I can do it. Uh, so infused incense is spent. Two more dice. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, I brain farted because that two dice I assume took it up. Yes, you're right. So let's do piercing arrow. And actually, if I do two animals and I get both, I would trap myself, which would be kind of dumb. So like animals, I don't even see a point. So two from the other ability, and that's seven. Okay. So yeah, I'll do the multi-arrow also. Maybe I can shoot the other guy. I could do animals with Brute Buster and move Duster around and put my animals in the way. That actually might be a thing. But then I wouldn't be adjacent. If I got two animals, moved her here, then I'm not adjacent to attack again, so I don't think that's smart. But I could move her back one and then put, nah, nah, whatever. That's getting too cute and assuming I actually roll animals. All right, got the times two damage, but is it enough? Uh, it is, I think, because I got five hits. I got a bones. I got a bones on multi-arrow, but I'll just not apply it. I got the pierce, so I'll knock away the defense with the piercing arrow thingy. That rolled a four on that. And two time damage, that's ten. She's nine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this should be a one shot. Exactly, so it is. But uh, Alan's just saying, you do that to your animal friends, you're a monster, lol. 
That's what they're there for, just throwing them in the way, letting them get hacked up while I just like kind of, you know, uh, restring my bow and, and, and get all ready for battle. <laughs> so that's it. Duster gets smashed. She's nine health. I'm adjacent. I don't see anything stopping me. Five attack dice times two. Math is good, I think. Yeah, marked enemy. That's why I took it. It was the one shot the boss. Don't even need to use this. Didn't get the boomerang going. That's it. Very kind of anticlimactic there, but I fought Duster a few times now that I feel very, like, not afraid of her anymore. Like, I've never... There's other tyrants I'm more worried about in this in this core box, really. She doesn't seem that bad. Even in multiplayer, a little bit worse, a little bit more scary, but even not so. Like, I, I guess it depends on your gear locks in that case, but yeah, so far, Duster, I'm not too worried. I, I kind of, in my head, know how to build towards her. Pretty good, I think, because I've just been in that fight. If I have never fought the Tyrant, then I have more trouble, like, picturing what's going to happen. But, yeah, this whole deal, the way she only brings in, like, one baddie, uh, like, or, like, it's not tied to the days, seems kind of weird to me that they did it that way. Because you think this is, like, the longest boss in the box. She seems kind of like the final boss, but I, I don't know. But yeah, she gets all the baddie types, except for orcs, which is kind of crazy. But yeah, that's Duster. And that's Gilly. And yeah, we didn't get to his other cool side with the whole hearts on it, but uh, there it is. <laughs> Thanks again to Ron for sending sending me this print and play uh, set. So I have, I have some of the other ones. We'll get those out in the future. But that's pretty cool. Uh, so let's go. Yeah, I think we're good. Yeah. Uh, one shotting a boss. Nice. Uh, have you gone against Nom yet? Yes, I played against Nom a couple times. I think I have maybe two playthroughs on the channel so far. Um, I got. I think I got two playthroughs on the channel against Nom. But I, I usually like I put it here as a random choice. But I have played Nom off camera two or three times. It was actually the first one I played. I did the whole dumb thing like you see people say online where they're like, you open the box. I didn't really look online at all. And it recommends in the training thing to play against like Drellin or something in, in the back of the rule book or whatever. But uh, Nom here, actually, let me show you. Nom uh, is only like one length. Uh, it's short. And low days, low progress. So in my mind, I, and only three baddie types, I was like, yeah, this guy's a starter boss. He's the one I want to practice against and try to learn the game. Yeah, no. No, no, that's tricky. He smashes you. And then when you go look up Nom on, like, Board Game Geek posts, you see the same thing people are saying, like, how am I supposed to beat this guy? And whatever. But uh, solo, he's not so bad. But with multiplayer, it's, like, pretty hard fighting him one at a time. But, uh, yes, I have fought against Nom. He's tough. I usually, on these streams in the afternoon like this, I don't like to play against him just because he's so short. So either like I play him quick, I get to him and I die, or I get to him and I beat him, but either way it's like a super short stream. Uh, but I did put him in today and then roll a die to ram randomly pick my Tyrant, and that's how I got Duster. And I did keep him in the options, so there was a chance I could have got him today and I would have played him. But yeah, stay tuned, we'll have more Nom. But yes, I have fought Nom. I don't remember if we won in the one I played on video, but... I've gone against him three times with two gear locks, not beat him yet. Yeah, with more than one gear lock, pff, totally different story. But playing against them solo is not as bad, I find. And it also depends on the gear lock you bring. Because it's thick skin three. When I play with my wife, she loves playing patches. And obviously, poison. You know, it's a thing. And, but the recovering health he does is kind of nuts. When I read that, I was like, oh man. So even when you're getting through thick skin three, just like heals up one. So even if you got poison going on him. I mean, if you don't reapply poison or bleed on him, then he's going to like be healing one and negating one of those every turn, kind of. And then he removes dice on his backup. All defense dice are removed from target before applying damage. So that's like a dirty mischief. And then he does true damage on his other die roll. Yeah, he's a beast, man. I just, the one at a time fight thing is rough. Because in solo, you ignore the battle queue. But in, in multiplayer, you're actually building a queue of guys that also add trouble to it while this guy's being a jerk to you. And then you're fighting that queue plus him all by yourself because he, he, the whole one gear lock at a time thing. So yeah, 
He is tough. I can understand not beating him, though. What, what gear locks, Alan, uh, have, were you playing against him when you say you take two gear locks? Did you just try different ones every time, or like the same gear locks, and which ones? I'm curious what you, what you, uh, what you brought to the battle. I've not used patches yet. I did pick it and Boomer, then pick it and Tantrum. Both sets never got more than three rounds. Yeah. Pickett's a good call. I think the time we beat him, we were using Pickett, and in multiplayer we used Pickett and Patches. And I don't think we've fought him yet in our, our Age of Tyranny playthrough, so there's a chance Justin Mel and I, going three player, will have to fight against Nom soon, and with Scars, and all that stuff. So, assuming we won the one that I'm posting tomorrow, unless that one includes Nom. I should stop talking now. Don't want to give away spoilers. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Uh, interesting. But yeah, throw patches in there with the poison and, and the consumable dart, uh, poison darts on um, patches. Even if patches only survives for like a turn and you can get poison on him once, that's sometimes just enough to tick him down a bit. And then if you get another guy in there to maybe attack him kind of like a big hit or two, then that kind of can finish him off, maybe. The also thing is Patches has the revive dice. So if you get the revive going, whether it's a consumable or you get the whole, um, um, what's the other one? The one that uses the little uh, other consumable. <laughs> yes, we haven't played against Nom yet in the videos I posted. That's all I'm going to say, but yeah. Um, but stay tuned. <laughs> all right, so... Uh, but yeah, Patches is huge against Nom, I found. Uh, just because the getting true damage through the thick skin. But also, Gilly here, that gets through thick skin also, his um, piercing arrow. So I would have would have definitely taken that die against him. Um, and the cool part is I could have attacked him from range position. So even if he knocked me around, I can still hit him. I don't need to be adjacent to Nom, uh, which is huge. And the pets might have distracted, but yeah. Patches. Bring patches along with it. Uh, I'll try that when you do multiplayer. Because what you can do with the patches revive die, that's what I was trying to get to. You can still fight with patches or bring patches in second, and then you can revive another gear lock who then, after patches dies, will come back in. Uh, for only a few health, of course, but. That might be all, all you need to do, because remember, gear locks come back in at the top of the queue. So remember, when your other gear lock's entering, I believe he enters at the top of the queue also. So you at least, whoever comes in usually gets a pretty big shot on Nom, um, if you can do it right. Um, that's the other thing. But yeah, Nom is tough. I was contemplating just trying to run around and let the exhaustion rounds kill him. If, yeah, if you can last that long, but like, Pickett. Pickett can do that. Pickett can last long, but it's the problem you're saying you had like Tantrum and Boomer. Those guys can't. So like, if you can have Pickett go out first and kind of last as long as he can, maybe build up a big shield bash, hit, hit Nom, or just defend and keep surviving, hide in a corner, and just keep taking hit after hit and getting your defense dice going, and, and your repeatable heal and your repeatable defense, and you can have maybe Pickett hold the battle off as long as you can until those rounds, and then bring in Gilly or bring in um, sorry Boomer or Tantrum as a last resort to then just come in and try to do as big of an attack dice shot. So then you build them heavy on attack, and then you just hope they come in and they like do the one shot to finish them off kind of idea before they get killed. That's the only thing I can think of using those two pairs. But I'm not a Tantrum pro for sure, and Boomer I've only played a couple times. But at least Boomer can come in anywhere she is, and you can target the boss. Tantrum, you have to get him near the boss, so it might waste a few of his decks. And both Boomer and Tantrum need a build-up to get their skill dice working, so to get their whole grenades or his his, uh, his, tan his uh, Tantrum die, whatever you call that. Uh, his little, little red dice. But anyways, yeah. Wow, that was a cool stream. Three hours, 19 minutes to get Duster ticking down. Not too shabby, not too shabby. All right, well, it was a pretty cool stream. Yeah, we got 16 plus the five 
from J plays donated. So we'll put that into the um, into the undertow fund. So we'll keep doing a fundraiser every time I stream too many bones. Uh, and if we do a, another playthrough, uh, any any too many bones, I'll just keep that that running on the screen, and then we can try to uh, all the too many bones fans. If you guys want to see, which I know there's a few that have chatted uh, or commented before, that want to see undertow on the channel. Well, the fastest way I can think of getting it is to get some assistance from you guys, and then we can get it on the channel uh, quicker. We can support Chip Theory and get another copy here, and then we can get a whole bunch of videos done of it where we can play all different tyrants, different gear locks, do a campaign of Undertow, and mix around whatever we can mix, um, and yeah, spice things up. And if we don't get to the $100 to buy Undertow, that is okay. That is okay. I'll leave it up for, uh, like, we'll do it for a month or two, whatever, and if we don't get up to there, which I'm totally okay, I'm totally okay if you guys don't donate, that is fine. No offense taken. But I'll just use it to purchase uh, whatever money is there after we just decide to call it. I'll just use it to buy like 40 days of day lore or gasket or tink or some other gear lock that we don't have uh, to just to add in some variety with that. So no worries, no worries. But uh, yeah, I appreciate all the donations we got today. You guys are awesome. George, have a good night. Um, yeah, and thanks, Alan. Uh, yes, and thanks to the donors, yes. Alan knows, Alan knows. All right, so that's going to be it. If you're new here and you're watching this later, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you do not miss when we go live again. You can follow me on social media down below. There's Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. I post on most of those when I'm going to go live. Uh, so if you don't want to miss it too, that's another way. Um, and yeah, if you want to donate to the channel and support us, like our awesome Patreons have done and some of our viewers have done during this stream, uh, there are links below. Patreon, if you don't like Patreon, which some people told me they don't, uh, there's a PayPal link down there if you just want to do a one-time donation. And if you'd like to donate to our um, Too Many Bones Undertow fundraiser thing instead, uh, just let me know if you're going to do a donation through like PayPal or whatever. Um, but there's another link there to donate while I'm streaming that will go to this total, which I think will work even if you're watching this later. I don't know, though. It's, it's all new to me. But, uh, yeah, thanks a lot for watching, guys. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. in the stream.